This is Fanspeak, the weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome. Uh, today, of course, is Fan Speak, and we got some interesting news, and we got some interesting people, and we actually are doing an interview with a uh, Kickstarter today, uh, but we'll be getting to that a little bit uh, later. Uh, so uh, first thing I always want to do is to say welcome to all our guests. I see a bunch of people are already waiting. Uh, thank you very much, Joshua, our favorite troll, of course. We've got Bullet. Uh, we got uh, uh, Roger Heller in here, and uh, Eric Boyd just showed up. Hey, hello, party people, he says. Well, hello to you, too, sir. Uh, very happy to have you guys here and there, uh, here with us. Of course, uh, do keep in mind, check it's out our, our party, audience, which we always it is a party, uh, which we always appreciate, of course, and uh, hit that share button so your families and friends and extended community can know what we're doing here on our live stream. Uh, but the first thing I always want to do is come over and say hello to my panel. Uh, so I usually say he- hello to the oiled one, but I'm going to say hello to the oiled carrier first. Hello, Thundero. Every time with this guy and this carrying oil. I don't carry anything with oil in it unless I'm putting it in my car. It's the okay. only time I carry oiled things. He carries me. He just ashamed of it. <laughs> Why are you ashamed of our love? Oh, oh, oh my. It's, it's not love, Booster. I'm using you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. It doesn't mean that he treats me well with this no one around. Oh, Ladies, sorry. I'm a new record. A new record, ladies. For fan speak, it only took thirty seconds to degenerate into this. Yes, well, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, hey, our guest is actually on the drive home, and he'll be joining us when he gets back home. And he's uh, he's listening. In. Well, hello, Travis. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, forward to talking to that. We haven't talked about uh, a uh, uh, new comic book Indiegogo or Kickstarter here in uh, oh, a little bit, a little bit. So uh, we're going to be talking about that mm-hmm. today and looking forward to it. I like it. He's listening in on the drive. He's uh, he's giving us some time to see how long it takes for him to regret his decisions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, of course, we do have the booster here. How are you feeling today, man? Are you uh, are you energetic? Are you ready to go? I'm, I'm awake. I'm energetic. I I have energy. Okay. All right then. That that. I have an energy it. drink. You have an energy <laughs> it's all, drink. It's all working together. Yeah, it's all going. All right. It's all sweet. go, baby. Let's let's do it. George. Hi, George. Hello. Okay, well, there it is. The excitement is on, guys. The energy levels just went through the roof. Thank you, George. It's a party, boys. It is Woo. a party. Uh, my house is noisy again. Okay, Night Pope, uh, what are you doing over there? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, and, of course, we're joined by Denali as well. How you doing, Denali? I'm doing fine. Enjoying the Florida showers as, as it becomes normal now. Yeah, you know, I mentioned this the other day. It's supposed to be our rainy season uh, is starting up, but uh, we haven't had any rain. Actually, you know, I was driving home yesterday uh, from uh, after my uh, work, and, um, you mm-hmm. know, it, it wasn't a particularly hot day per se, but, uh, man, the sun is just baking on my skin, man. It's, um, you know, but uh, we talked about that a little bit in uh, one of our TFT uh, shows, uh, Teen Fuller Talk. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but um, mm-hmm. uh, we talked about the fact that uh, something that we don't see the news talking about very much, and I thought uh, I find that interesting, is the fact that scientists have announced that there are actually two new additional UV lights coming out of the sun. So there's now three of them hitting on us. And uh, you can feel it on your skin, man. It just bakes on your skin. Especially us old white boys. You know, we're not built for the sun. <laughs> the sun it destroys me. It's like uh, <laughs> right. oh, well, it's, it's and, brutal when you've got as white as me, Chester. I just burn and then I peel off and I'm white again. Talking it's, about you're a half oh. black Maori. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, of course that's right. Yeah, I'm I'm so my ear, bro. I'm gonna get some fish and chips and a mean feed, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But. Being it being Florida, it means that the front side of my house is being rained on. The back side of the house is actually dry and sunny. It is interesting how that happens down there. I remember mm-hmm. one time I was sitting at a uh, uh, one of my grandfather's barbecue parties, and uh, he has this uh, this beautiful um, I don't know it's like a covered porch I guess, but it's it's so mm-hmm. big you don't want to call it a porch, but it's kind of what it is. Uh, but you know we're sitting yeah. there cooking and it's a nice beautiful day and uh, uh, and uh, coming from uh, he he lives on a on a creek uh, he has a big big land right and um, right. Uh, I watched this literal wall of water just march toward us. 
right? And it went right over us. It took about maybe 30 seconds and it continued on. So it was like this this super torrential rain that was about, I don't know, about 100 meters wide, less, 80 mm-hmm. meters uh, in thickness. It just, it, yep. it's weird, the weather down in the south, actually. But anyway. Yep. And uh, let's see here. Night Post, uh, uh, Night Pope is continuing to tell me why her uh, house is noisy. She says, "My parents are back from Hawaii, Hawaii, and so is MSNBC." Oof. Mm-hmm. Oof. It's brutal. Her mother like worships Rachel Maddow. It's just, it's just vicious. Rachel Maddow, that that clown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. The one who uh, almost bowled on live television when it was revealed that there was no uh, collusion. <laughs> oh, that was. Well, that was juicy. Well, I mean, they're all full of it. I mean, come on. But those uh, those liberal media guys are really worse. The worst. I mean, at least with Hannity and uh, I actually like Tucker. Uh, but with those guys, I mean, yeah, they're biased. But at least they're 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 not they're How not. How could insane. you just like Tucker? Tucker has like the most amazing facial expressions when he's talking like to Tucker. idiots. I like Tucker a lot. <laughs> and I mean, they're all pundits. They're all they're all biased. Is what my point is. It's just the the Republican ones like Fox News are not are not insane any at least is what i'm saying uh these other ones you know and i actually saw anderson cooper uh because anderson cooper became quite a disappointment for me and my wife actually because we always enjoyed anderson and he's a nice kind of a good speaker guy uh but since this nonsense has been going on he 100 you know, on board right uh but i did see him yesterday when he was talking uh i forget who he was it was yesterday or the day before he was talking to um mm-hmm. comey do an interview with Comey and uh, you know he took the answers and he didn't grill him hard of course he didn't but uh, he did ask a few questions like uh, yeah don't you think this is a bit extreme uh, don't you think this is kind of crazy what you guys are doing and then Comey of course let it out and he let him do that but uh, every now and then Anderson's the real Anderson steps up I think he's just a coward at heart is the problem but anyway I do I have mean, a liberal way the path of least of resistance isn't it yeah, no, it's uh, he's that's what he's doing. Hmm. Yeah, I do that's have so I do have Cooper's a Game Motron in here. What is uh, who is this? Hello, everybody. I don't. I've never seen this person before. Game Motron. That's a cool name, though. It is a cool name. I, I've, I've seen him a few times. I have. Maybe you're not paying attention, Chester. You're Probably not paying attention. Not. All of you. It's, it's all my fault. I know. I know. I know. Uh, is, but yeah. anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump into our first article of the news today because boo, I got a whopper for you. I got a whopper. Okay. Are uh, you guys ready? Right. I'm ready. A Burger King whopper. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm all uh, I'm all oiled up. I'm ready to go, boys. I like whoppers. That's true. Maybe My I shouldn't say that. It's kind of disrespectful to the whopper. Uh, but um, yeah. and I haven't had one of those in quite a while. I don't get them very much over here. Uh, but um, here we go. Um, <clears throat> Alyssa Milano, uh, who's uh, a little bit younger than me. Uh, she's my brother's mm-hmm. generation, really. Um, and, uh, you know, she used to be a hottie. She's been naked sexy many, 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 many times. Uh, she's mm-hmm. been one of those slutty girls. You know, that's that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Uh, just going to have to Google uh, that. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. And Alyssa Milano calls for sex strike. <gasps> no. She said Milano, uh, Milano took to uh, Twitter where she wrote, our reproductive rights are being erased until women have legal control <laughs> over our bodies. We just cannot risk pregnancy no. by not having sex until we get bodily autonomy back. Well, first of all, baby, you ain't having no more babies. You way too old. So I don't know what you're on about with that. You ain't joining them uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, I do love the response. I'm going to let you guys respond to this in a second. Just let me get through this. Uh, uh, of course, she here's her little comment in her Twitter. Uh, but I love the responses here. Robbie Starbucks says, yes, please stop having sex. You have the support of every Republican in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anyone talk you out of it, of this, Melissa. It's a fantastic idea. Less clients for Planned Parenthood. Ooh, ooh. It's ooh, what lad. we're all. It's what we've always wanted. Uh, uh, Inez Helena <laughs> says, "Not having sex to own the very people who want you to stop having sex." Hmm. Uh, Patriot Keeper <laughs> says, uh, "That's a great idea, and amazingly enough, will accomplish the goal of uh, there being fewer abortions." Oh, once again, the abortion thing. And I guess this is what this argument's all coming out of. Hello, men. Mm-hmm. I'm available. <laughs> Meredith says. <laughs> Absolute hero. <laughs> <laughs> and this goes on. This goes on. I could read. I probably will read more, but I'll stop there. Uh, but um, what do you guys think about uh, Little Miss Milano having an opinion? She's a gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Yeah. 
these people, man. So what is this all about? It's just to do with Georgia and their new abortion laws? Probably. Uh, I, I, the, the thing is, uh, these these people, these pro-choice, uh, I guess is what it is, uh, they go on and on and on really. about their choice. And I, I don't think anyone's actually telling them that they don't have control of the body. I think what people are trying to tell them is that, uh, hey, you know, there's another body involved. And maybe we should consider the other life. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, that heartbeat bill, which came on, I guess, in six weeks, there's a heartbeat. Uh, so that heartbeat bill is basically to protect something that has a heartbeat. And, uh, you know, I get it. But the thing that she doesn't understand is that uh, and a lot of people don't understand this. America is not a democracy. How many times does this need to be told to people? America is mm-hmm. not a democracy. It is a republic. Mm-hmm. And a matter of fact, it's a republic of unified states, each with their own individual sovereignty. They do not have to follow any federal law, actually, uh, if they do not fe- follow the federal law. However, they don't get tax, uh, uh, you know, they don't get tax money. A federal tax money. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know what you're on about. I don't think you understand where you live. Uh, I really see this as an ongoing problem of just, it's ignorance, right? Wow, I silenced them. Did you see that, guys? I, I, I shut them all up. There's nothing to disagree with. <laughs> well, it's true. Um, all right. It but, it is yeah. interesting because this is going to force. I mean, on a, on a political note, it's going to force the issue. They're going to have to actually hear in the Supreme Court whether abortion is right. Because believe it or not, that's never happened. Uh, the Roe v. Wade thing that everybody talks about had little to do with abortion. Actually, the way they won was a privacy clause, and it basically said that the government doesn't have the authority to ban a medical procedure. That being said, this is a specific. The bills that are being written now are get around that very cleverly and is very specific. So now if they take it to court and they challenge it, they're going to have to basically defend that you have the right to a very specific type of procedure, um, which isn't in the Constitution, so you don't. <laughs> but yeah. it's very interesting to, to see as states like Georgia and in other states, my state, have slowly started to turn the corner and pull this back um and in georgia i guess if if you cross state lines for that procedure and they catch you they can try you for conspiracy to commit murder so wow all right yeah but the this this fight is ever ever continuing it will not stop but uh, uh you know it's it's very interesting joshua uh is using way too many napkins uh which is a very interesting sock uh, puppet account name there joshua uh you know joshua usually strikes me as a very young person who has very little inside their brain but occasionally joshua actually says something interesting it, it's shocking actually to me it, it it like comes out of nowhere and hits you in the face like a like a, a leaded glove, uh, and he does say something very interesting. He says women do have reproductive rights, and it does in fact start with a sex strike. That is right, sir. You are right. <laughs> well, they. I mean, they're literally just doing everything. It's funny because this keeps happening. They've gotten themselves so crazy that they eventually put themselves back in the position that the right wanted them in, which is stop having sex, stop having so much sex, and not taking the responsibility of that sex, which is a lot of people use abortion for so they've basically just put themselves in an abstinence position Mm. which is exactly what the right's been pushing for years now you guys might be wondering why are we talking about this on a comic book pop culture show well i could lie to you and say well charmed actually had a comic book and she was in that uh but it has nothing to do with anything it's just funny it's just funny yeah because Mm -hmm. she's such an idiot what's this doing on bounding into comics because it's funny dude because yeah, Alyssa it. Milano <laughs> cannot cannot actually get her brain straight. She keeps yelling about one thing or another. I've heard her say so many things uh, over the past so many years and literally contradicting herself three or four times over that period. It's it's hilarious. She's an absolute moron. Oh, silly woman with all the six strike thing. Jokes on you. No one's having six with me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken mate. Yeah, uh, she's just one of those uh, uh, silly ones. I think basically because she, like I said, she's about my age. She's only a few years younger, and uh, I think um, she just is irrelevant and she wants to be relevant. She's been, uh, uh, well, I think she thinks she's been in the limelight for a long time. Uh, she had that show I can't remember the name of it, uh, where she became a little kind of like Christina Applegate. She became a little uh, uh, kind of a you know crush of a lot of young uh, young boys at the time, uh, and then she was on that show Charmed when she was older. But in between that and 
after that, she does really, really low-level B movies where she takes her clothes off. Uh, so, you know, I don't know really what I have much to listen to Alyssa Milano for. Uh, but um, I do. Does uh, she still do that? She still does. Well, I don't know who knows what she's doing now. I think she just wants well, to be seen. She feels irrelevant. I feel. You have to celebrate her uh, because. It's rare that so someone can actually contradict themselves in a single sentence. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's to be cherished. I, I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of lefties who seem to be able to be masters of it. In fact, yeah. well, you know who's the boss? Thank you very much, Roger Heller. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that had um, that had that other dude on. I can't remember his name. Uh, Tony Danza. Tony Danza. I like oh. Tony Danza though. He's oh, hold cool. on. Uh, oh, sorry. I have to take this uh, out of uh, context. Have, have any of you guys seen Star Wars Scene 38 Reimagined? Yes. No, I haven't. I saw I saw the link for it, but I just haven't uh, checked it out yet. Okay. Uh, may I suggest that we see it here, if it's possible? Okay, continue with Alyssa. Uh, uh, yeah, well, there's not much more to say. Uh, the chat has some opinions. Eric Hawkins says, I used to have such a, a crush on Alyssa Milano, but now she is a nut job. I'm ashamed I named my daughter Alyssa. Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> brutal. Night Pope says, says Ooh, that's brutal. <laughs> it is. Night Pope says, Charm did have a comic book, but it was stupid since the show already had, had an ending. Uh, yeah, no, I was just bullshitting, dude. Uh, it does have a comic book, so therefore it's technically related, but now we're just talking about it because Alyssa Milano is a... Uh, She's a riot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it. She's so silly. And the simple thing, a simple matter of the fact is, uh, it, it's it's funny to me that we have these uh, so these leftists, I guess. Uh, but the, they're really sitting in two groups, don't they? You have the ones who are ex ultra Puritans. I mean, hardcore Puritans, right? And then you have the other ones that say men have sex all the time, women have to have it too. So they go out and they just slut themselves across the planet, right? And it's uh, it's funny because in the end, men don't have as much sex as you seem to think we do. I know, you know, <laughs> but whatever. I thought it was funny. Uh, let's move on to something that uh, actually is comic related. Denali. All right. You're in. Yeah. You're in nah. crisis. <laughs> Final reset nah. will not coincide with the big doomsday clock reveal. Well, that's <laughs> nice. That's thank you. <laughs> no, they're going to tie those two, those two articles together. They're, they're going to tie, um... tie Mr. Manhattan and Wally West together somehow. But Booster is, is very excited about this. Fact, that is yeah. <laughs> and you would know, right? I would, yes. Yes, you would. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe he makes that noise a lot when we're together. I don't. Maybe. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I hate. I, Harris in Crisis is just terrible. It is terrible, and uh, you know, I don't know. I've heard much good about the Doom's Day Clock. Out of the hat for uh, uh, issue ten, right? It's, uh, suddenly, magically, bloody uh, fixes everything. You know, Wally's entire legacy, for example, which he just destroyed without effort in issue nine, with making uh, Wally Wisp a time traveling psychopathic murderer who who kills himself in the future just to bring back a corpse as a red herring to make it look as though he didn't kill everyone. When he could use that exact same tra time travel bloody technology to stop himself from becoming a mass murderer maybe i oh i hate the story and you're gonna find out that it's not even the real wally west it's, it's a creation from mr manhattan the real wally west is barry allen don't 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 worry uh booster don't worry if this was on a, in a movie most people would love it so it's okay it's okay it's it is very okay. big brained oh it's an interesting choices some I new aspect to was less <laughs> miserable than this freaking thing, and I had to watch uh, Sue Dibney get plowed can, by Dr. Light. Can we please, wow. for the love of God, wow. stop calling everything crisis? Please. Can we just stop? Yeah, they have it's a pension for that, I, I, don't I, they? Yeah. They've driven well, it so far into the ground, it came out the other side already. It's in China. Yeah. Knock it off. Well, well the problem is, is, is subconsciously, they know they're in crisis, and they need therapy, but they're using their books as therapy. <laughs> Um, things and make everybody else suffer. Uh, Eric Hawkins is funny. Nerd trigger alert. Yes. I'm a little... <laughs> Harrison Crops has triggered me a little, yes. Yeah. And I would imagine uh, that uh, it has a time with Doomsday Clock because in the Batman and Flash crossover, the, uh, the button, they had like little electricity zaps come out of um, the button, right? The comedian's button. 
and they also we saw reverse flash getting killed by dr manhattan so i'd imagine there's a bit of a crossover there with you know the kid flash being the main uh, murderer of heroes in crisis <laughs> and doomsday clock being about uh, our dr manhattan and the button so there's a little bit of crossover there i don't know how it's going to be so together i just i don't care about heroes back. in crisis it's all awful but doomsday clock is actually a pretty good read all right well, well there you go well be f- get ready to be disappointed booster because they're going to tie those two together in the most horrible oh, no. i love it way i love it it's very wally west like, bury him forever just get uh, wipe him away i love it i hate wally uh, west. No, the no, worst no, of no. all the flashes jay garrick is a better yeah. flash than him you wow. piece of crap. Wow. You, come into my, you come into my house and you shit on Wally Wiz. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Nick W says Dan Didio hates Wally West too. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. He hates most legacy characters, I feel. You could you yeah. could tell this is this Heroes in Crisis thing. It has Dan Didio's fingerprints all I over it. I don't think it, he's a legacy character, personally. Wally? Wally's not that old. Well, no, legacy I mean, character Wally has been, has a, been a around for a long time. For another character. Yeah, he mm-hmm. has been around for a long time. I, I don't, but because I, don't. I seem to remember Barry Allen, and then we got the Wally West, and then something happened where the Kid Flash was Wally West. I don't know what happened. Something weird happened. Uh, but um, Wally's been around a while, actually. The first crisis. Kid Flash mm-hmm. dies, and Wally West steps up into the Flash costume. There you go. Correct. Yeah, Barry Allen dies at, at, at the beginning of, or at the end of... Uh... The first, if it was an infinite crisis or crisis on infinite uh, Earth, crisis on infinite Earth. Spoilers, um, yeah, yeah, for a comic that's from how, the 80s. That's <laughs> where yeah. that's honestly, it, this is the one of the reasons I dislike Wally West is because that's where Flash should have just ended. They should have just had Wally be a new speedster with a new name. Um, I don't like it when characters are replaced. I mean, I get that sometimes it's okay, like a character like Batman, it would make sense. But for me, it makes it sense just... for Batman because it's a simple thing, right? The simple right. got to pretend that Batman hasn't died uh, to keep the the, uh, the thugs of Gotham afraid still, right? Exactly. Plus, the Flash is especially to with Barry Allen. He be, he was the Flash. I mean, he. I mean, I know there was Jay Garrick before him and whatnot, but he was definitely the iconic Flash for. Period. I mean, there's a reason they always use him in the movies and in the TV shows and stuff over Wally, and it's just he's a he's a better character for one. But for two, it's the fact that they. It's just not. I don't think. I don't think the Flash name fits a title that can be passed like that. It just doesn't. It's bad, bad writing. And well, my, this is yeah. my opinion. Well, you know, there's a lot of comments in here in the chat actually referring to that. So let me get to them. Uh, Pixel Trader says, uh, "Chi uh, Choina." I don't know what that means. Uh, Chida. Oh, China. China. Okay, okay, okay. China. Uh, I see, I see. That was, uh, I get it. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Eric Hawkins says, I like Doomsday Clock, uh, but by the time a new issue comes out, I can't remember what happened the issue before. That's a problem. Uh, Miss, Bor- Miss Born Radiant says, look how they massacred my boy Wally. Uh, Nick W <laughs> says, Wally West is by far the best Flash. Uh-oh. Them fighting words, I guess. Uh, Eric Hawkins says, Wally West is trash. Barry Allen all the way. Oh, there's some disagreement, I see. Uh, Bullet oh, says, boy. Time Treadmill, a.k.a. Cosmic Treadmill. Yes, I know. Uh, Game Hawkins Motron. Man of great distinction. What do you say? I right. said Hawkins is a man of great distinction and taste. Well, there you go. All right. <laughs> uh, Game Motron says, If you replace Crisis with Frenzy in all DC books, then the titles do sound more fun. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Miss Born Radiant says... You know what? That's more accurate. It is, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Miss Born Radiant says, uh, time to fix all of this with a time stay, uh, a time stare master. Oh, I get it. <laughs> uh, now, Nick W is... He's not joking. He seems to be serious. He says, Wally West Flash comics were awesome. He was way better than bland Barry Allen. Okay. You can I actually that. love uh, Jeff John's run on uh, The Flash. That's some Wally West stuff. is basically a and Mary also, Sue. He's way oh overpowered. God, that's why he's garbage. God. Disgraceful. Also, Wally West was my Flash in those Tim Burton uh, Justice League cartoons, you know? For that's crying true. out loud, Wally that's West true. is the only person in the, in the DC universe that I can remember anyway that um, Superboy Prime's afraid of. That's how much of a Mary Sue he is. He's ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> um, comic Book Bob disagrees. Wally was a far better Flash, hands down. But here's the <laughs> thing with Wally. 
Hi guys, I made it. Uh, here's the thing with Wally that's really messed up though. Wally's the the big savior of the old 52 of the old universe, right? He's come mm -hmm. back like in two years. They're already destroying his character. Like, what are you doing, DC? Yeah, they only just brought out back poor bloody Wally West. We only just got him back. And in that uh, first issue of DC Rebirth, we get that beautiful reunion of Barry Allen and Wally West. That was gorgeous. And they're killing it all already. Barely a couple of years have our Wally, real Wally West back. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand why they decided that everything they good they did in Rebirth needed to be undone. Um, that, because, that destroyed everything so quickly. Yeah, I don't know who made that decision, but they need to be fired. Quick, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the thing I think you're running into, Thundero. Uh, like, uh, I'm not a big DC fan, so, I mean, I know who the Flash is, of course, but I, I'm not a big fan of DC. I'm a Marvel boy. Uh, but uh, my kids growing up, of course, I introduced all this stuff to them. And uh, one of my kids' favorite characters, particularly my son, is the Flash. And But they grew up with Wally West, dude. Mm -hmm. And they know Wally West and all those animated shows, which are some of them are amazing. As we know DC does really good animation, right? Their yeah. live action sucks hard, but their animation oh, yeah. is really good. Uh, and they grew up with all that stuff. They love Wally West, dude. So I think this is what you're running into. I think there's a lot of people in your chat are probably in that millennial age range, and they kind of they say they just have more understanding of uh, uh, Wally than Barry, uh, particularly because I don't think there's a lot of animation with Barry. No, because he was dead uh, since the 80s for about 20 years. He was one of those, yeah. a few characters who stayed dead for a very long time. So Jeff John that, decided to... Who, who has two live-action TV show of The Flash? Who? Barry, Barry. Allen. Mm -hmm. Case yeah, was... As of recent. All right, it's Denali true. has spoken, I guess. Uh, uh, I guess. <laughs> who's anyway, in, who's it, in that it? is an interesting conversation, though, because uh, usually, uh, the, the used to be for me when I was younger, the conversation was who is who who's who's faster, uh, you know, uh, Barry Allen or 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 uh, Kal El, right? That was kind yeah. Of and who is played by Isra Miller? Barry oh, Allen. God. <laughs> that is not that Barry is Allen's fault, point, sir. sir. That is not Barry <laughs> Allen's <laughs> fault. He didn't choose his. Hello, actor. I'm like super fast, you guys. <laughs> We love Ezra now. Don't be mean to the Ezra. He's yeah. our favorite boy. He is. He, is he just wants to be boy. happy. He does, and we love Ezra. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's uh, let's shift gears here. We'll, we have a couple more news things we'll get back to later. Uh, but uh, we do want to come over here and talk to Travis. Hey, Travis, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? How are you? I am doing really well, man. Sorry about the kerfuffle yeah. earlier in the week, but uh, you're in a better show anyway. This is Fan Speak, so uh, we get a lot more yeah, on this one. I mean, I'm still willing to address this Wally West issue, so you know, don't don't move over to me. <laughs> uh, no, because if I don't if I don't cut it off right now, it'll go on for three hours. You don't understand. Oh, what you I'm haven't even with. addressed the Marvel aspect. I have enough hatred for uh, heroes and crisis you're, in my heart. You're, you're not going to say that uh, Wally West was hiding in Marvel universe, like what the, some of the theories. No, no, saying. no. Uh, it's this yeah. is the Wally West thing, and I'm going to say one thing just before you move on, Chester. I apologize. Oh, no problem. This is one of the major Marvel and DC's issues is where they clone each other's story. This story, the the whole story that the Tom Taylor, Tom Taylor, he's the writer, right? Yeah, he's yeah. saying or Tom King, Tom King, Tom King, yeah, yeah, Tom King. Uh, is sharing is the same thing that made Cap a Nazi. Remember Pleasantville and all the, they're all hiding and trying to fix their stuff to make themselves better. Right. It's oh. just kind of, the, it's the same clone story that they do over and over again. And why would you clone the Nazi Cap story? Like, I don't understand. That's why we hate the clone yeah, right. saga so right. much. Then they <laughs> learn from the Peter Parker incident. God. Um, no, that was a very good point, yeah. And uh, Thundero does have continuing points on it, and I shall read it. He says, I wish they would have left Barry dead, too, and just had Wally West uh, uh, not be named Flash. What would you like to call him, mm. Zippy? I mean, there's a I billion different names you can come up with speedster, for speedsters, and they have. They could have just gave him one of those and not had one of them be a villain or whatever. Yeah, um, I also love the name Impulse. That's a cool one. But Zippy yeah, would Impulse. make a great little nickname, you know? Oh, I mean, Impulse. Was that an Ethan Van Scaver drop? Is that what you're on about now? All right. Uh, but, um, hmm. uh, no, I mean, actually, Impulse is a good name. It is. It's a good name. And actually, uh, Ethan's character design was awesome. Uh, but um, uh, it's actually interesting. I was running a uh, superhero role playing game. It was Mutants and Masterminds, I believe, and uh, years ago. And I, we had it was a long running campaign. I think it went on for three years. I think. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, one of the players' characters' name was Speed Metal. 
and it it just was such a cool character. He played oh. that off so beautifully. He had metal skin and he was a speedster. Uh, but uh, it, it just metal, really that's... cool. Name. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, speed metal is an awful name. <laughs> no, it really worked well with the way he played the character, though. Because he Not was to a, mention he was a speed a, metal, metal last. Well, in Godspeed, that's he's fairly new. He's pretty cool. Yeah, I like Godspeed. Yeah, yeah, Godspeed, yeah. Godspeed, yeah. 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 That would have been a good name. I just I just I just think if you're gonna do that big tragic moment with Barry where he sacrifices himself and basically saves everybody, they should have retired him. Period. Just they, retired they him. Really, the flash, everything. They should have, but he was dead for a good twenty years as well. And he's talking well, about the name. In. He's talking about the name as well. They should have retired the whole name. Yeah, no, I know and what have, I get it. Yeah. But they did write it in that he was coming back. So there, there was always a prophecy that he would come back three times. And this is his third time. Wow. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. Uh, Funny you see like fact. The point is he's back. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys have, uh, are certainly more DC fans than me. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. that's all good. Uh, but uh, of course, let's uh, get back on track here, and let's uh, let's talk to Travis. Now, this course is Travis Gibb. Uh, if you guys don't know who he is, uh, Travis is really cool. He's been around doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we've interacted a few times now. Uh, very happy to have Travis on the show, man. And uh, so, Travis, uh, for those of you, uh, those in the chat who don't know who you are, why don't you just give us a kind of a rough introduction of yourself, please? Uh, yeah. Let me see if I'm on the other. Yeah. Uh, I'm Travis Gibb. I'm a comic creator. Um, sorry, I got my. Uh daughter running around in the background, if you guys can see that. Um, so what I've done is I've created comics since 2003. I've uh, just recently in this last couple of years coming, coming back, I took a break because I had a, another daughter who's now 17. Um, and I write crime, primarily crime and uh, horror. Um, right now I have a book called Broke Down in Four Dead Bodies. Uh, we're on the second issue. Um, but yeah, that's kind of who I am. I, I write comics. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, who's doing the art for you, dude? Uh, his name is Felix Navarra. So Felix Navarra, he's out of Indonesia. And it's really interesting um, because issue one was done in 2008, like for the most part. I wrote issue one and two, and then we, he couldn't finish because he had a baby. And I trashed the whole thing because that's what you did back then. You're like, no, I, I want the – because you want the whole team to do one through four, right? right. If, you're, if you're just a new series, get the whole team. Um, and then my wife, I got married, and she convinced me to come back into comics. And she was like, hey, why don't we finish it? So I looked at it one and two. I was like, you know what? I can make a really good 32 page. So the first issue is a full 32 page, full color for, for just $5, way better than you get at Marvel or DC. Um, uh, so we went and did that. And now issue two is out a few months after that. So we're, we're rocking and rolling. Sweet, dude. All right. Well, I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to show everybody the book we're talking about. It's on Kickstarter, not yeah. Indiegogo, by the way. Uh, it's on Kickstarter. Uh, so uh, let me uh, jump over there and um, show everybody that. And uh, you can uh, walk us through it, dude. Yeah. All right. Let me find it I here. Be, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see you. Let me see. Oh, uh, I got it. I'm going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Trust in the Chester. This is a general, I general trust good you. idea. You should. should don't, don't trust him. Don't you, trust, it's a trust trick. me. It's all a, it's all a, it's all a trick. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to share with you guys here in the hangout, so you'll be trust. just fine. Yeah. All right. Here we go. You see it now? All right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So here we go. We got Broke Down in Four Dead Bodies, Issue 1 and 2, Crime Noir. Well, all right. All, already I'm interested. Uh, and it says, uh, after being set up by Miguel, Randy and Denver are broke down on the side of the road. Violence, murder, gangs, and police. Issue 2. Sweet, dude. All right. Well, uh, tell us about this project in particular, man. Yeah, yeah. So the story is this: uh, it's two guys break down on the side of the road. Um, they have the get. They have gangsters after them, like traditional gangsters. They have a Mexican gang after them. They have uh, police after them. They have a motorcycle gang on after them. All these people are after them because they have a case. These two guys hate each other. There's a lot of drama between them. Lots of guns, lots of violence, and lots of f words. All right. All right. Do they sing? They don't sing uh, uh, until the spinoff or the movie. The, until the spinoff or the movie, they don't sing. I get it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of going through here, showing the page. You guys are funded, so congratulations. Of course, you want to hit these stretch yeah. goals, I know. No, no, uh, and you got eight days yeah, left, so plenty of time. With $13 from our first stretch goal, which is a sticker um, and, and a book called Parallels. 
Um, oh, see that little sticker, a little chibi sticker, um, and then a, a digital book called Parallels. And Parallels is a whole bunch of short stories I have. Uh, some of them have been an image because I used to do, for those who are old school comic fans, I've been in Negative Burns. Uh, okay. Everybody know that? Negative Burns is where Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Ryan Michael Bendis, all those guys came from. Their first comic work is from Negative Burns. Oh, really? I also had written that book years later after all of the talented people left, but in the same book. <laughs> all right. So claim the fame. I get it. Now, uh, right. obviously, <laughs> we're doing a Miami Vice uh, wink here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, do, we're doing crime war. And, and that's it, it's a Miami Vice slash Quentin Tarantino. So you're going to see a lot of, of vulgarity, a lot of, of, of talks of that nature. Uh, that's cover A. That's that's Felix's cover. Uh, issue four was four dead bodies. Now we're up at five. Um, this is Rich, uh, Rich Woodall. Uh, if you don't know him, he did Electric Black that just came out from Scout. He's also on Kickstarter right now with the Savage Dragon, um, Johnny Ray Gun crossover. Um, we did really good. The first one raised four thousand dollars with one hundred fifty backers. So we did really good. We did put it on Indiegogo, but it was way way later. Raised a little bit over there. Yeah, well, you know, uh, over in this indie revival that's been going on, a lot of people have been using Indiegogo, and the main reason is because uh, Indiegogo is cheaper. Really, it is. They take a, a smaller percentage. Uh, it is kind of interesting to me though, because uh, when I was, uh, uh, well, I still do it, but I did a lot of board game things. I come from that world, really, and uh, the for Kickstarter for years and years. I mean, over a decade, I've been uh, backing and doing this kind of uh, Kickstarter things, and. We always frowned upon Indiegogo because we saw it as this extremely progressive left-wing thing. And it's kind of ironic to me that they've actually, even though they're doing some silly stuff too uh, at Indiegogo, they've become more of the tolerant, you know, hey, everyone's welcome type of feel, whereas Kickstarter has become this progressive feel thing. It's weird how things have shifted back and forth, and it's unfortunate that they both seem to be doing things that are not really fair practice in my opinion uh but uh, why did you choose kickstarter over indiegogo um well one kickstarter has a better success rate for new creators it just does it's just reality it has a bigger success rate because if you can't get on one I've of definitely the, noticed that it's true. yeah uh, it, it, it does have a bigger success rate two it has a built-in comic following because of it's just longevity so it has a lot of built-in. When I when I did day one of issue two, I got fifteen hundred right off the bat. So I was a quarter of the way there, and that's just from people who oh, followed damn. me, did it without any email blast or anything. That's just people who've been following me waiting for issue two. Um, so there's there's that big jump where Indiegogo doesn't have that stuff built in. Um, that now that I've used Indiegogo, there's a lot of great stuff. Like for Indiegogo, if you're ever doing an anthology, there is no reason to go to Kickstarter. And let me tell you why is because you can build those those back end pledges. So those are great for people who are buying their comp copies, so they can help get your numbers up and help you build that presence there. All those like back end, and that that's really cool. That I wish that Indiegogo has. I wish that people were on my email list. I could give them a different deal than what's listed. So things like that are really really cool. Um, but yeah, that's why I went to kickstart a built-in fan fan base already. But I'm going to do the both thing because I do – there is people who just won't come over to, to Kickstarter, uh, which is sad because there's good books on both platforms. No, I think so. And, you know, it's, it's interesting as well uh, when we take a look at it. Uh, uh, before this uh, Indiegogo or this Indie Revival began – uh, which really was kicked off by, of course, uh, Richard Meyer and his Jawbreakers, but we saw just a flood of things come after that. Uh, but um, uh, the the interesting thing for me was that before that on Indiegogo, very few books were successful at all, comic books. Yeah. I mean, there was the occasional thing that would come up, but there was, those were had name recognition, right? But in general, Indiegogo was a horrible place to do comics, right? In Kickstarter was certainly a better success rate, uh, but then since this indie revival started, we've been seeing you know what they've made over two million dollars, right? Has been raised, right? So it's um it is an interesting shift to me. Uh, I've been kind of looking at that side of it the past year, uh, and it has been it has been really been an interesting shift what's going on between Kickstarter and Indiegogo for sure. Well, and you'll see it too, like the money even on Kickstarters, like things are funding for a little bit less than they used to. So it is affecting the Kickstarter numbers. So there is people who decided I am only going to back things on Indiegogo uh, now or vice versa, uh, you know, or they can just do Kickstarter. So the numbers as a whole are a little bit lower. Um, but, you know, the, the positive is there is 
a built in, and why I like Kickstarter, at least for me right now, is it has a built in fan base and I've been able to build and maintain that fan base because of the Kickstarter platform being unified for that. The minute Indiegogo figures out a way to, to do that the same way, mm-hmm. they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do great. It's just, they haven't got it yeah. yet. Yeah, no, they need to catch up and they need to offer better uh, software options as well. I mean, uh, one of the cool things you could do with Kickstarter, uh, uh, you know, there's many things but uh, that are advanced over Indiegogo. Uh, but uh, one of the things I think that's great that Kickstarter has is the built-in live streaming option, right? Uh, it's gone. It is. Why would why would they cut that? That thing is awesome. Uh, I, it's because they found that a lot of people were just using, that they got better results from YouTube and from Facebook. Right. So well, it wasn't producing benefits. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I, I uh, They had partnered with uh, the Mythic Games uh, to introduce that tech, uh, well, over a year ago, um, a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, and I remember watching those original first live streams that came over, and they were great. We had hundreds of people yeah. in there with us. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I don't understand why they would cut that. Uh, that's a very direct marketing. It also helps to – because when you're doing a, when you're doing a, a, a Kickstarter – it's a lot easier to have community interaction than it is Indiegogo, right? And having that community yeah. uh, growth and the community interaction, uh, it's exciting. That's what makes a, a, a Kickstarter or you know a crowdfunding uh, fun is because of all the excitement around it, right? And uh, those guys over at Mythic Battles, particularly Mythic Games, sorry, uh, they did an incredible job, I think, of keeping that hype up. And all of those, uh, you know, weekly Wednesday live streams and a couple of the special ones they did, it was a lot of fun. It built into that. I think that was a great feature. I think it's unfortunate they, they cut that. Yeah, it's a little upsetting. I think I don't think it's gone forever. I think they're just revamping the way they do it. Hey, if you want to sw- scroll back up, I, sure. I want to show you something really cool that I do. So right here, right below the, the, the sketches. We'll keep going a little bit further, and you'll think they're sketches, but they're kind of fold out, those two. Mm-hmm. So this is something cool that I do that I think is very unique for me. So I give uh, a cover to an up-and-coming artist. The first, first was Frank Uzen. If you guys uh, follow uh, Instagram a lot, he does a lot of remarks. So he'll grab a, a book and do remarks on it. Really, really popular, a huge following. He's doing his first uh, convention here in these states. And then Jim O'Reilly uh, is a great guy. He's got Realms, which is an Indiegogo project, if I'm not mistaken. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. And Jim Jim O'Reilly does Upper Deck. So I give them their own covers. So those are black and white covers that are kind of sketched. So they could leave. Uh, so Frank left some room on the right and left so he could draw a remax. Jim was like, I'm going to use this whole thing. So I build that to build their presence to help them get exposure at just like it was a Jim Lee or whatever. So I grab the biggest guys who I think are making an impact. And that's how I try to give back to the community and try to build a fan base uh, for these up and coming guys. Yeah. Did you see the, um, uh, did you see that amazing uh, uh, um, tribute to uh, Chewbacca uh, uh, that uh, Jim did on the fan edition? Yes, it was so good, Jeez, so good, man. unbelievable. He yeah. didn't do that so, cover, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that's just the rough draft for Jim. Jim hasn't finished my cover. He was supposed to do it that night, and he was like, "I need to do Chewbacca," and I was like, "Hey, man, do Chewbacca." No, <laughs> I'm happy he came over, dude. I don't know what's going to happen with that piece, and I, I hope he hit uh, 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 shop that around like I had suggested him too, because I'm telling you, that's something that uh, Lucasfilm should have in their catalog. They should have yeah, that pick. That absolutely. was one of the most yeah. beautiful tribute pieces I think I've ever seen. Um, a really good job from Jim. And when they asked yeah. where he got it from, he could say the Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition on just the Busby channel. Well, that doesn't matter. Uh, but um, I'm just happy I was there to see it come together live. That was truly a, a beautiful piece of work of art he did. We've seen a few things like that come together over here. Uh, I think uh, I've mentioned this before, but uh, Todd Mulroney's um, uh, Stan Lee tribute was just uh, out- outstanding as well right uh but uh yeah Jim, no just speaking of jim o- o'reilly uh damn dude that's a good artist yeah so i give him so what i do is i i print 200 of that and i give jim 50 of it so jim is going to own 50 of it to do whatever he wants with the other 150 for the kickstarter and, and i do that to, to try to give him he can sell it at cons i also give him some because it's jim i'll probably give him i'll either make him he can either have the artist edition for issue two or he can, we can put it on issue one. He can just have his own artist edition, um, whatever he wants. So we really give it up to that person to build that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Well, um, I do have a few uh, comments here from the uh, chat. Let, sure. me, uh, let me just uh, yeah. ask them to you uh, or state them out loud, I guess. Uh, Eric Hawkins says, I had some people tell me they would have backed the Zombiful World of Oz, which Eric Hawk, uh, uh, this is Eric telling us what he heard people say about his book, uh, if it would have been on Indiegogo instead of Kickstarter. Yeah, that's an interesting point, and I don't know why that happened. I, it might be May- it might have been John Malin that did that, actually, I think, um, uh, and some uh, of the things he said, because there's no reason it should matter whether it's on indiegogo or kickstarter from our point of view we're still paying the same amount of money we're still supporting right. the book but so uh, it, it is true with diversity in comics and not being able to get on kickstarter and they believe right. that kickstarter is yes you know uh removing people for their own political views and such and i don't really think we should punish good comic book creators because of what happened to the person in comics I so that's just my take i agree yeah. they're not wrong kickstarter has absolutely lost their mind and they didn't used to be like, 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 like I said before, for um, over a decade, Kickstarter was the place we went because Indiegogo was too lefty weird. Um, seriously, right? I've been in many conversations with people doing, uh, bringing out board gaming uh, uh, Kickstarters and, uh, you know, talks behind the scenes and things like that. And uh, they, that, was, that was the general thought. But boy, has it reversed, man, uh, because Kickstarter did do that. Mm-hmm. They do that. And the problem is that Indiegogo does it sometimes, too. Um, uh, but yeah, I agree hundred percent. You shouldn't punish a creator just because they're not on the platform you like. I don't think mm. that's cool, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Especially Eric, considering that Indiegogo just does not have as much success as Kickstarter. That's just, that's just well, a fact that we got to, it's gotta not as good a platform. To, yeah? It's simply not as good. Yeah. It's just not. And, well, uh, well, and mostly it's because of the search feature, right? Like if yeah. you put your book there, it's really hard to find your book, yeah. which is concerning. You know, um, and then the in-demand thing doesn't help because the in-demand is mixed with the regular. So every four or five is the in-demand, which is great for someone who's on the in-demand, but not great for someone who's using Kickstarter or Indiegogo as their primary comic buying platform, which they need to understand that people do. There's people who never go into a comic store and only buy their comics from Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Well, Kickstarter is far more professional, obviously, and they're constantly trying to build up their business and build up their algorithms and et cetera, et cetera. They are at, on top of it all the time. They're constantly being dynamic and trying to move forward, where Indiegogo seems to me they smoke way too much pot. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's what it feels like because they're not keeping up and, you, and they're making money. They're, they got money coming in, so I don't know what they're doing. But uh, anyway, uh, the other comment here we have from Bullet says, Oddly, I back games on Kickstarter and comics on Indiegogo. It's exactly what I do, dude. I, I, I back board games on Kickstarter and comics on Indiegogo. It's true. Yeah, and, it, and I mean, it, again, same thing. Games are just more popular on, Indiego- on uh, Kickstarter than they are on Indiegogo. Um, the, the positive of Indiegogo is is... If you are a new creator and you're, you're not sure of yourself and you're not ready to go there, because I knew I was going to hit close to my goal. So Kickstarter was a way to go. But if I thought, I don't know if I have any fan base or anything, making that thousand dollar goal and getting that 500 is a great thing. That flexible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's a beautiful. That is true. Yeah. Uh, Eric Hawkins says, uh, Travis is a pretty cool dude. Definitely a project to back. I've worked with him a little on the uh, Indie uh, Advocator. Interesting. You hear that? Yeah. 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 There's, a, there's a book. It's I think it's like the fifty dollar pledge level where you get the advocator. So what the advocator is, um, I'm all about indie comics and I want to get indie comics to the to the next level. So I, me and a few guys, what we did is we took our individual platforms, so our individual comic books. So I took Broke Down and Four Dead Bodies. Someone took a book called Welcome to the Void, Grimwood Crossing, Binary Star, all these different projects, and we put them into one book with four page stories and kind of did it like images. You know, the image has these little shorts where they right. give you the first issue and a bunch of stuff. We kind of did the same thing for indie comics. But instead of it being, you know, just pages from our book, we made it original pages. Reason why, A, we're going to need um, uh, trade stuff later. And B, because a comic, an indie comic, takes about four or five months to come out then re- compared to a regular comic, this allows us to have something out in between those, those gaps. I see. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That sounds cool. I've never heard of the indie advocator. That's a cool idea, though. Yeah, issue two is coming out in the spring. Uh, we did uh, the winter edition. We just got it printed. Um, if anybody's in, I heard someone say they're from Florida. I will have some at MegaCon if you want to come see me. Oh, sweet. I'll there see you, go. you. There you go. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. That's your that's your neck of the woods, Danelli. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, I'm well, sitting out boosting, I'm talking, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. No, that's cool. Well, you got to be active. You could be out there promoting yourself. That's what you got to do. Uh, and of course, Eric Hawkins here, who we're talking to and having some interaction with uh, Eric uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, Eric, as we all know, is a great artist as well. Uh, we've seen him uh, uh, as a guest here, but we've also seen him on the fan edition of Drawing a Quarter, and he's uh, he's stellar. Uh, so uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, now he's continuing his uh, comments here, and he says, Billy Tucci had suggested once I finished my Kickstarter, I should piggyback an Indiegogo campaign after the Kickstarter was finished. Uh, it is something I would possibly consider in the future. Uh, several people have done that. Uh, I know we had the uh, White Widow guys on here, and uh, they've had extreme success, which is uh, cool because they're they're very cool guys. Actually, we've enjoyed talking to Benny yeah. and uh, them uh, a lot. Actually, um, and uh, they had a lot of success on Kickstarter. They came over Indiegogo and had some success there too. Uh, I think uh, that's a it's a pot. I think it's a it's a good idea. Uh, what do you think, Danelli? I know you have an opinion on this matter. Well, I, I think, no, it's a, it's a good idea. I mean, there are certain people that won't, like it's been mentioned in the chat, they only will do Kickstarter, they will only do um, Indiegogo. And so why limit yourself to just one platform? If your idea is for consumers first and to do the indie revival and indie comics and you're a creator, then you want the best possible audience. You, you don't limit yourself to one segment and anybody who says, oh, you're betraying things, you're not betraying anything. You're just saying, look, I'm pushing a comic out. That's all I'm doing. If you if you like to buy my book, awesome, and share it, please. But other than that, I think it's a very good idea to, you know, know, know who your audience are and go where it's, they're at right there. So if some audience are can only do Indiegogo, then throw a, do a campaign for 30 days at Indiegogo. And then another thirty days at Kickstarter. Yeah, why not? You'll see the results. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah, and you never even, limit yourself. No, and, and even if you're only going to pick up a few thousand extra bucks, so what? That's a few thousand extra bucks. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, uh, I did. Yeah, go ahead, Travis. I did it with issue one. Um, issue one, I, I did a Kickstarter right before this issue two. I threw it on Indiegogo, and I did. I didn't make my goal. I put a low goal of five hundred bucks. Um, I made I made half of that, so I made my in demand, so I could get some money from it. But what I did find was uh, there were a lot of big backers. Nobody really messed around, you know. There was a couple of digital backers, but everyone was like, "I want everything. I want everything you have," which was really cool. You know, they all wanted every cover. They didn't want just one. They wanted everything, which was cool. Um, but uh, again, I, I didn't have a lot of success with it. But again, I didn't do it right after. Right, uh, there was months in between, so people had a chance to buy it at cons or from my website. So people who were interested in it may have got it other ways. Cool, yeah. And model and uh, JP, my boys, are over here, and I think they're trying to. Uh, what do they call it when you come over and you try to uh, uh, instigate and cause trouble on a channel? What do they call it again? It's called being a prick. Oh, there you go. Okay, no, I, <laughs> I, I didn't say that because uh, I love JP and and model too. Uh, but uh, glad to see you guys. Uh, but uh, Travis, uh, now uh, before we come back over and talk to you directly, uh, well, let's let's kind of do a quick little walkthrough of this uh, uh, Kickstarter and uh, tell us uh, what you're offering here. Now we see the book, we get the idea. It's uh, I'm assuming you might have some kind of flashbacks and stuff like that in the story. But uh, in general, we're sitting at one position on the road, right? This is a single scene that's playing out. I'm assuming. Uh, correct. Yeah, there's flashbacks of Ford, but they're they're broke down on the side of the road. At the end of the first issue, somebody finds them, and we we go from there. A, a wrecker comes in, in, a guy who's running a, wreck, a wrecking company. Yeah, we saw we or saw him in the art I was looking at earlier. Uh, but yeah. uh, let's take a look at these pledges, uh, uh, these perk levels that we have. Um, so uh, we got a simple little digital one here with three bucks. I'm assuming. Yeah, why don't you just scroll down uh, because I have little boxes for them, kind of like the, they do in Indiegogo. Because it's oh, a good I idea. see. And then down at the bottom, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, and I'll cut out a lot of the the stuff there, and people can see something visual. If you don't mind. Oh no, no problem. Yeah, I do like the way the page is set up. I have to say, by the way. Thank you. Right, here we go. All right, so issue three. So if you got issue one, um, three dollars. This will get you issue two. Um, that's the digital version. Um, that's it. So it's just a digital version of it. It's 28 pages. Um, that's it. All pretty right. pretty simple there. <laughs> uh, this will get you one and two. So if you missed number one and you just want to do digital, five bucks will get you issue one and two. Like I said, issue one is 32 pages of story. 
um, issue issue two is twenty eight. All right, uh, and this one right here. All right, eight dollars. So that gives you that book, The Advocate, that we we're talking about. So that's with six additional stories. So it'll have a four page broke down story, but I'll also have a, a story called Modern Testament, Mary Revised. Welcome to the Void. If you're Kickstarter guys, you get know some of these names. Grimwood Crossing, uh, Binary Star. All of them are, are comics that did really well and funded last year. They're all in this this issue. So you get the digital version of that for eight bucks. With uh, everything else. Uncanny Kodiak is asking how many pages. Again, I know you said it. Just repeat yourself. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> issue one is 32. Issue two is uh, 28. Uh, and the Advocator is 36. There you go. Uh, 10 bucks, you get the book, and I give you all the digital stuff. So you get the 10, that, and then all the digital stuff. Sweet. And we're still in digital here. We haven't gotten into physical copies yet. This is print. Yeah, the 10 bucks gives you the print. Yep. Oh, 10 bucks is so the print. Oh, I see. 10 bucks is a print. All right. Yeah, it's a print, but it also gives you all the digital, and it has all that combined. Oh, nice. Um, uh, for 15, I give you two covers. So this is uh, the standard cover is A, and then uh, B uh, is uh, Rich Woodall. Like I said, he's done Electric Black. He's done a lot of independent stuff. He's He even did a backup story at Invincible and Savage Dragon. Uh, so he's been doing a lot, a lot of stuff, but he's not a pro, a standard pro, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks cool, though. I like so the cover. Oh, yeah. No, he's a, he's a great artist. Um, and this is – so these are my – this is my pro get caught up. Um, I have a regular one for 20. That's just one and two. This is the pro version. So I did have Carl Moline. If you guys know him, he did Buffy. Mm -hmm. He did Route 66. He did Superboy, Avengers Arena. He came in and did a cover for me. Um, so if you want both the pro covers, that's that's for 30 bucks. There is a standard cover version too. It just doesn't have a graphic. It's 20. Sweet. And now this is my collector's kit. This is where the money is. So this is get you the gym, gym cover. If you want the gym cover, Gonna have to give me 50 bucks, but I'm gonna give you all the covers of everything. So if you scroll down a little bit, I'm gonna give you two art prints. Uh, this one's by the one on the right is by Ricardo um, Fernandez, I believe is his name. And then Andy um, Nolan did the one on the left. Both of them uh, have art of other projects that I've worked on. And then you get all three covers. You'll also, and, and like I said, the gym one is hand numbered. So it's hand numbered, one of 200. Signed by me. Sweet. All right. Yeah. And then the collector's kit. So this is a collector's kit. Uh, so the 61, the, this is the $60 level one. This is a collector's kit, but it also adds, if you didn't get issue one, you can pick an issue one. So if you scroll down, I just give you an issue one. You can pick any cover of issue one that you want, or you get two of each one. So of those, you can pick two of those covers. Oh, I see. And uh, Bullet says, this was pretty funny. Bullet says, you can't go wrong unless you live in a van down by the river. Oh. <laughs> I like these little oh, things, no. too, you got going on here. So, yeah, name our location. So someone's already bought one. So someone already bought the bar, uh, but nobody's named the bank yet. That's an hour. It's for 75 bucks. It gives you all the stuff above, mm -hmm. and it also gets a, you get to name one of the locations. So someone's going to name the bar. Um, and then the other one is the bank. And now the bank, everyone's like, I don't want to name a bank. But I promise you, the bank is the most important character in the book. You just don't know it yet. Um, so for 75 bucks, you get to, to name one of those locations. Um, and you get all the collector stuff from above. Sweet. All right. So uh, the next one is if you want to be part of it. So you get all that stuff. Um, and you get to be part of the Broke Down History. Um, actually, hold on. Scroll down just a little bit more. I have a very important question. Yeah. So you said for 70 bucks, you get to uh, name one of the locations, right? 75, yep. yeah. 75. 75 bucks? All right. What if an immature dickhead like me comes along and says they want to name it Buttsville? Uh, you can. Um, I'll just probably take out the sign with a gunshot. I am. Issue. <laughs> I am backing this now. Right, there we go. There you go. Sweet. Um, so... So this is a poly bag. So this is kind of cool. So this is for hundred bucks. So this is comes in a poly bag, sealed poly bag. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to give you is a random sketch cover. Um, and actually, there's not a lot of backers on this. So if we still stay at the end with not a lot of backers, I'll let you choose it. I have ten different covers. Uh, so if you scroll up just a little bit, you'll see four of the sketch covers right there. Mm -hmm. So the one the bottom right is Carmeline. Guy to the left is the guy who does chibis. Uh, this person does uh, rock and roll. 
She does a, a, a little web comic called Rock and Roll. Uh, this is a famous tattoo artist who does celebration and all that. He's one of those traveling, like famous. His his name is um, give me a second, Tim Schubert. Um, and then I have a whole bunch more. I have the guy who does Superboy right now, who's who's done a cover for me. Um, I've got another Carl cover that's full color. Um, so we're gonna you get to pick. It's all gonna be probably bag. Now scroll down a little bit. Okay. You also get the artist edition, so the rare covers the, from issue one, Frank the, Frank Guzman, that's hand numbered, and you get the Jim O'Reilly, plus two random alt covers. So if you scroll down one more time, so I have a lot of random covers. So if for issue one I, and two, I have all these alternate covers. We also have noir editions. Those are normally exclusive to when I do a convention. So that's a full black and white version of the issue. You get you have a chance of getting that in there oh that's cool and uh bullet here has a couple of interesting uh little uh, comments uh he says cash bank and uh uh but uh, i think game motron is actually the interesting he says perm bank i think it would have been funny if you said sperm bank but all right <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh, i couldn't resist uh and super you, you, fan you're... go ahead dude did we lose Travis? Maybe he didn't die on us. Oh good no! Good job, Chester. You killed you, him. You, you, you good job. You got good one of them. job. It, you, your joke was so <laughs> crap that he left. It was like, oh, you what broke a his entire life. internet. Yeah, I yeah. His, his modem is smoking. Yeah. <laughs> he was going in on it. Oh my god. Oh well. Uh, and Buttsville is no more. Well, how could I resist that? There's no way to resist such a thing. It's impossible. <sighs> You yeah. could resist it by not doing it. No, I couldn't. It had to be said. <laughs> and now he's never coming back, you know. Okay. Well, let me get until he, he probably needs to uh, uh, restart himself and come back in. I don't know what happened with that, but uh, uh, I'll continue here real quick. He's got Superfan $150 or more. Uh, are you a Superfan? Get an exclusive sign print by Frank Uzan, Uzan and a CGC copy of any issue. Sweet. And he's got this. Um... Wait, the, the guy's that name is actually Frank Hello. Uzan. That's an amazing name. Oh. Hello. Well, uh, he's he's back. Back. Hey, you're <laughs> back. How you doing? I have no idea we thought we killed you with our crappy jokes <laughs> <laughs> well perm, perm dumpster bank of international trades and commerce um is pretty bad i do apologize i couldn't resist it it's really booster's fault if you if you understand it's really booster's it's fault true. it's true it's uh, very likely my fault all right dude but continue <laughs> super fan 150 dollars. yeah super fan so yeah so this is a cgc so you can get any issue you want cgc so if you want gyms any of that i don't so Interesting fact, and this is a, a pro tip here. If you are a pro and you sign up before a convention, you can get your own stuff CG seed for $15. Oh, well, really? That's right, $15. Yeah. Yes. So I will CGC whatever issue you want. I'll obviously give them the best copy I can get. Um, and so I'll CGC whatever copy you want. Make sure it's signed and all that. You also, with that one, get a signed print. So that's a exclusive print, one of 100 of the – that rare cover um, that's that's full color. So it's, it's normally black and white. You get it full color. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and that's a brand new one. Just right. It is. And uh, a lot of people do like that CGC stuff. Uh, uh, I don't understand why I wouldn't want to read something, but uh, I know people like it. How about <laughs> Thunder? Are you one of these uh, people like the CGC thing? CGC, what is that? I don't even know what it is. Oh, well, that's when they put it in a plastic kill. and say it's confirmed this quality. Oh no, I don't like it either. That's probably why I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I see. I don't, I don't particularly. No, I, I, I just, I like, uh, I like my comics to feel like comics and stuff like that. Yeah, some people yeah. love it though, dude. It is certainly popular. Yeah, no, it's yeah. just not for me. <clears throat> and what's nerds. this? Uh, nerds, yeah. <laughs> nerds, what, 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 what would we have any of them over here for? Uh, what is this? Be in issue three. What is this thing? Correct. Yeah. So um, if you want to be in issue three, um, you can be a character. You get to be in one of the factions that's after him. So you can either be a cop. You can either be a biker. You can be a part of the Mexican gang, or you can be part of the traditional uh, like Sopranos type gang. Um, so for $250, you can be in the book. We'll draw you, make sure you're taken care of. Um, 
we had people do it last time. Um, we also have two people already pledging on that uh, uh, on it if, right now. Uh, if I if I do that, do I have to die? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, it depends on the way the the plot's going and what faction you join. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will let you know that privately. You know, oh, um, can I opt in to die? Yeah, I want to die in the most gruesome, brutal way possible. No, I don't want to what? die. <laughs> I want to be the superhero. I'll go out, I'll go out in a blaze of glory. Can so, I pay you extra to end me IRL? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could add that, but I could add that pledge level, but we'd have to find a country that would allow it. <laughs> No. If you're a doctor, they'll let you do it in Switzerland. So, you know. oh, ooh, oh, God, God, that. Wow. How did we go to euthanasia? What the hell, Thundera? All right, Eric, Eric Hawkins says. Well, that explains all these campaigns with CG, uh, uh, CCG levels now. Travis, you just let the secret out of the bag. Lol. Yeah, it makes you feel important. That's it. Mm -hmm. I know some people love it. I, I know. Um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure, uh, if you guys saw the comic book collection that I have and the fact that I actually take the books out and read them and how much some of them are worth, uh, people would have literal, literal seizures in front of me. Yeah, I, I'm the same way, Chester. Um, uh, my, I have a sketchbook that I've collected for years, sketchbooks. I'm like, honey, even though I have a lot of the first issues of major characters, I've read them so many times. My sketchbook is worth way more. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And then what's this stuff down here? This add stuff. What is it? So those are, those are add-ons. So yeah. where you can add different pledges. So if you wanted to get the parallels book instead of the digital version, you wanted to add it, you can get it in print for five bucks. Yeah. If you just wanted to add a special cover or you wanted stuff, there's a couple of options there. Some people wanted like three copies of Jim's Jim's book of, of just Jim's cover because Jim's so talented. So right. I added the option. You add twenty five dollars to your pledge level, and you can just get more of his, his yeah. stuff. Now, this is an option that Kickstarter has that Indiegogo does not, right? Um, well, I mean, any yes, correct, because you have to. You can only spend what you're allowed on there. I know. I guess you can write your number on. on not really. I, I've I've noticed that you can't do that in Indiegogo, and I think the what really really helps uh, Kickstarter the most is Backer Kit. Uh, the backer kit software yeah. that everyone uses that uh, with Kickstarter, of course, is is very handy and very useful. It's 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 versatile. And when you're running a campaign, you want to be versatile because, you know, if you have a, a project and you have some people saying, OK, well, I don't have uh, 250 bucks right now, even though I'd like that, uh, I, I can throw in uh, 20 bucks into the campaign right now. And then when it's done, I can add money later. And this is something yeah. Backer Kid does that's really useful. And Indiegogo does not have that option. Yeah, so this this is just doing it the old-fashioned way where you just add it. Because the negative of Backer Kid is you really need about 200 or so backers, a little bit over 200 to really make that financially worth it. Because right. it's a, there's a big sign-up key, key to get it. So you really got to get past the $5,000 mark, close to the 6000 mark. Um, but yeah, so you can add that. Um, I also have a digital super pack there too. Mm -hmm. And these are all, so this is the last thing I add. I just recently added this, so I put it at the bottom. This is all my digital work. So everything I've, I've done written, um, the, these are, these are a, a digital copy. Dog days, act one. I like the look of that. Um, now, I, I have to ask the question, of course, we ask every time we see someone has digital, because mm -hmm. there's a big argument within, at least in this community, uh, whether you do uh, digital or don't do digital. Uh, because there's a good chunk of these creators, uh, especially the big ones like Ethan and Mike and uh, stuff like that. They're very much against doing any kind of digital whatsoever. Because they think people just do that, just steal a book. And I don't think they understand the uh, one, the the collectible aspect of things, and two, a lot of people here in the indie in this indie revival thing that's going on, we're here trying to support uh, a, a a renaissance in the in the comic books is what we're trying to do. So uh, you know we're throwing our money at stuff because we want to support that stuff. Right. Um, so I think they're kind of missing that point. They're thinking a little bit too logistically instead of uh, looking at the spirit of the thing. Uh, but uh, but, you know, they can have the, they're they're free to have their opinion. But uh, obviously you don't agree because you have quite a bit of digital stuff. So yeah, what? no, I, I mean, I was I was just talking to Tyler Carpenter about this yesterday. So mm -hmm. so let's take his demons volume two. his minimum buy in to support him was ten dollars. Well, no offense, there's a lot of people on the internet who are poor. They're just broke. They'll give you a buck or two 
and you're, you're failing to give them that option. If you look at my backers on the right, on my digital backers, I've got tons of people who are willing to throw me five, three, five, eight. And it's not about the digital rewards, more or less. If they back me at that lower level, I have the whole campaign, and this goes for Indiegogo or Kickstarter, to try to sell them on the physical. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like I have the whole campaign to pitch to them. That's why we have all these updates to go, hey, right. you really want to get this physical copy because of this, this, and that. I get why some of the bigger guys don't want to do that because their stuff is shared around and they don't see the back end. But for us indie guys, we need every dollar we can get. Mm -hmm. So why not give as many options to give us dollars as possible? Yeah, yeah I've never. I, I, I'm, I'm on board with him entirely. It's it's stupid to limit your options. I know they want to create this air of exclusivity, but it's not really exclusive when anybody can back it. Um, and re at that point, all you're doing is putting a price gate on things, and price gates are really old school business. Uh, modern business is to try and keep your price as low as possible, which has always been the model, but especially digital stuff. Um, if you can get it lower, get it lower and you'll sell more of it. I also, I also, uh, with the internet, the marketplace is literally worldwide, so you don't have to worry right. about right. being exclusive. And I also think, uh, Thundero, they don't realize that we're not there yet. That's We're not there yet. This right. thing is, we're in in the inception of the idea. Uh, we're not there yet. And, and I think it might be a little bit, and I, and I know I'm going, to get, I'm going to get pushback on this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think it's a little bit of arrogance is what's coming in here, of thinking how important that they are themselves. And they misunderstand that, yeah, you might be a great artist, but you're untested in the storytelling department. And we don't know what kind of writer you are. Now, people like Mitch Breitweiser, he was smart. He went out and got himself a writer. But most of these guys are writing it themselves. So we don't know what kind of writer you are. You don't know how how collectible this book is going to be. Uh, why don't we just really work hard on trying to build this up so it gets to the point that it is something that's collectible? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and it's then, also, and this is, a, this is basic business, it's far more important to build a book of customers than it yeah. is a book of sales. That's what. That's so if right. you can get in an extra thousand people, you're more likely to sell more to them if they like your product, which if your product's any good, they're going to then you are a thousand new people. It's a lot easier to do. Mm -hmm. So you want to get more number that, that num the most important number on these is how many, how many people have bought, not necessarily how much you've made. Now, if you make a million dollars, a million dollars is a million dollars. But if you only did that to a hundred people, you're probably a lot less likely to do that again. Yeah. And you know, um, uh, on top of that though, I I've backed over 40 of these indie revival books myself. And I know Denali is way past me. What are you up to now? I don't want to say it. I, I He's way past me, right? And yeah. I oh, back, no. No, no, I back. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm ashamed. It's an addiction. I cannot help yeah. it. But no, seriously. Now, I've backed a lot more than most people, though. And, you know, we do have the Denali's as well, which are throwing a lot of money at this, right? And the thing mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing with me is, I, and, I'm, and this is just straight up honest, I've gotten a lot of books so far. And I'm still waiting on a bunch of them, of course, and I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of books so far, and I'm telling you, the actual indie guys, I'm in their books. I'm enjoying a lot more than these supposed big pros that came in. I'm just just pure honesty. Yeah. I'm enjoying the indie stuff yeah, a lot more. I'm with you, with you 100 percent on that. Unfortunately, I'd say so far, uh, as far as overall quality from what I've seen, yep. the best book has been uh, Duck to Naples. Oh, Doug's is getting a lot of praise. It's quality, incredible. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. uh, but you know I was glad that I backed that book. <laughs> um, I, and I didn't back that one. Unfortunately, I missed out on that. But uh, uh, but my you point silly, is silly, silly man. Build oh, up. You didn't like the art. <laughs> I didn't like the art. Yeah. Um. Uh. But um. Uh, the thing with it is though, what we're trying to say here is build up your customer base, and by you sitting here and yep. uh, and offering them digital. Uh, uh, aspects of what you're creating is a good idea. It gets every possible person who can be involved in the project involved in the project. And that's a smart road. That's the way to go, I personally think. Well, the other thing, we've learned this lesson, and in, in, in a lot of ways the music industry has learned this lesson, is that with things like the internet, you have a global marketplace right at, right at people's fingertips. So you can offer them individual songs and still make money. You don't have to put everything in one big clump and say, here, give me $20. You can just be like, here, give me $2 for this song or $1. And people go, okay, because if you don't give people that option, they're just going to go around you because they can. That's the right. avenue's there. So why wouldn't they? So make sure you give them the option and they don't have yeah. to do it. A, a great uh, quote from the creator of Minecraft is he didn't care that his game was the most pirated game 
of all time. I don't know if it still is, but it was because it brought more people. He brought in so many That's people right. who bought it because of that. <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of the guy who created Hotline Miami when he found out that his game was on uh, Pirate Bay. He uploaded the game to Pirate Bay himself and said, look, if you're going to try to pirate my game, at least get a good version. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and it's smart. That right? made that game super popular doing, and that uh, move. And, and doing there's, success. Go ahead, Travis. Yeah, there's one more thing that you guys got to factor in for digital as creators, okay? We have never done this before, most of us, right? Yeah. So we got a quote from our printer. What if our printer messes up or we needed to do a reprint? Or what if the marketing material that we got? So my first campaign, I ended up being more successful than I meant to be. So everything I factored in, well, I'll need about 100 of these. So all my budget was on 100 of the, I gave air fresheners and stickers. I budgeted 100. Well, now I needed 200. So what does that look like? Digital saves our ass. It really does. It allows us that extra influx of money um, to, to be able to, if we made a mistake, to be able to fix that. You know, and uh, I'm going to come back over. I'm going to come back over here to uh, the chat and uh, uh, I'm going to stop uh, stop showing this stuff here and come over and say hi. Again. Yeah, sure. Uh, but um, <clears throat> um, I, there are a few comments here in the chat I want to I want to bring up. Uh, uh, first, Hughes News says breaking news: Orange Man bad. That is completely off topic, Joshua. Um, shame, <laughs> I, shame. I, I made him create a new car account called Hughes News. It's funny. Uh, Game of Tron says <laughs> digital is a is a lot less expensive than shipping to the UK. A ten dollar book can cost fifteen dollars of shipping, dude. I'm in Japan. That's twenty five dollars for me. Literally, it cost me many times oh, yeah. what the actual book cost. So that's a that's it's a brutal very for good us point. over here. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a very good point. Eric Hawkins said, "I had quite a few international backers that chose my digital only levels." Uh, yeah, because it's it's so ridiculously expensive, man. Um, uh, uh, and uh, Uncanny Cody says, "I agree." Well, awesome. Uh, Bullet says, "I don't want to sell to a, uh, an elite collector base and leave the unwashed mashes in the digital dumpster." It kind of feels like that sometimes, doesn't it, Bullet? It kind of does, dude. And that's not a good thing. Evan Von Skyver, I see you're here, and I knew you had trouble in the past, and I'm going to go extra long just for you today, man. Just for you. And he says, I require, require gold-plated covers. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, Eric says, uh, I ended up creating an exclusive cover for my digital-only backers. I had so many come in at the end, I wanted to give them something special. Awesome, dude. That's, see, that's that's customer service, right? Uh, uh, Evan uh, Von Skyver says, actually, I'm a digital-only type of uh, guy. Well, there you go. Um, I, I have been backing physical copies mainly, uh, and I don't even use the digitals, to be honest with you. But uh, that's simply because what I'm trying to do, and I'm kind of in a money uh, money log right now, so I'm not able to throw much money around uh, at this particular moment. But my whole point is to support the idea of an indie revival. That's what I'm doing. Right. Personally, uh, Uncanny Kodiak says, I got Doug's book and the art is inspiring and amazing. Everyone's saying that I'm such an idiot for not getting it. Now, uh, here's yeah, the thing, yeah. though. Yeah. Well, no, here's the thing. Doug to Naple has his book out. Right. He put it out mm -hmm. and everyone's loving it. And, you know, what would be smart on his part to have like a second printing run on Indiegogo, unlike some other person who I shall not name, who has already done four Indiegogos. And yet we don't have any clue of a book coming anywhere near us. But I won't get into that. Who, who, who's that, Chester? I won't name him. I shall not. Oh, okay. All right, fine. All right. <laughs> anyway, Jesus, Travis. Should I be that name? I shall not. Uh, but Travis, okay. uh, the, it's a good-looking project. I like your page setup, actually. Uh, I personally am uh, doing writing and stuff of my own, and I want to put out some projects uh, and uh, get in more in the side, the creative side personally. Uh, and, of course, Denali's doing that stuff as well. And uh, I really like the page you've set up here. So uh, uh, when I do my own page uh, setups in the future, I think I might be knocking on your door and saying, please, Travis, help me. <laughs> Well, there's a strategy to it. Um, I have an advantage, you know, and the reason why I did so well in my first one is I, I own a marketing company. Uh, I own a web design company. So I have a slight advantage of it. Um, but a lot of it's common sense. And people, what we do is we make things for me. When I go to the comic store, I'm not going to buy a variant cover. And if I do, it better be a good frigging cover. And I'm not going to buy a second copy because I have that variant cover. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing these things for Indiegogo and Kickstarter, you're, you need to give ways of people to invest in you and you need to give them options of ways that they can invest in you because if you only give them a five dollar option of invest in you they'll give you five dollars because that's what you gave them makes sense dude 
<laughs> makes sense. But it is a good looking page. It's a fun looking project. Uh, it's a uh, uh, congratulations again on being funded. But we want more than that. We there's eight days left on this uh, project. We want to see him hit some of his stretch goals. So definitely go over there and help him out. Uh, obviously, Travis is a real cool dude. Uh, we've seen him around the community doing all kind of stuff. He's he knows what he's doing, uh, which is a handy thing uh, because a lot of people we have on they don't know what they're doing, and that's all. That's good too. That's fine. We're all learning here. Uh, but uh, it is well, nice to see someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And you know what, Chester? I'll give you, uh, I'll message you privately. I'll give everyone the first issue to try out the digital version, even if you don't buy it, because I really believe in my product, much like you said. You know, if you guys want to try it out, invest in issue two. Give me the $3 for issue two for the digital copy, or if you want to get physicals at that time, I'll, I'll send it to Chester right after this uh, chat so he can post it or do whatever. Or I'll post it in the chat. You know, download it. I don't care. Well, rock on. There you go. Yeah. yeah, there. That is very nice of you. Think a nice thing for you to do, dude. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to push about this, Travis? Um, um, not not really. Except for I'd really love during this group to get the third to get to three thousand, so I can do a post tonight about getting to our first stretch goal. Really. So if anybody wants to dig deep. Not turning the begging guy, but I've been stuck here all day. Um, I've been busy, you know, because it's Saturday doing stuff. But if anybody hasn't backed, it'd be a good time, you know, uh, to, to back and get that to uh, us to that uh, 3,000 to get that first stretch goal. Well, let me come over here That's and it. refresh and see where we are. Uh, 4,309. Well, he needs uh, $13, actually, and I haven't refreshed that. Let, let me refresh here real quick. And, uh, yep, he needs 13 bucks. Of course, mine's all in Japanese, so I'm having to translate it in my head. But, yeah, I think it's $13. Uh, yes, yeah, so if any of you guys haven't oh, backed someone yet, help the poor sod out, will you? 13 bucks. Come on. Jeez. Do they not like the F word in this chat? Like, it's F words and violence and guns. What's not to love? <laughs> Goodness. Uh, well, uh, that is an interesting thing, uh, uh, don't you, uh, with Thundero. Thundero is kind of... Uh, he's a bit younger than me, but he's a little bit older than you, I think, Travis, or maybe not. Uh, but uh, it, it is interesting that the, those that fall within the, mm -hmm. the millennial age group, I guess, uh, I'm not sure exactly what ages fall into that. It seems to be confused. Uh, but uh, they do like a lot more swearing than the older folk, huh? Thunder they Earl. do, they do. And, and Quentin Tarantino, so my inspiration was Quentin Tarantino, and he started drawing, writing westerns. So I had to do this. This is why this book came out. Oh, he see. wrote westerns, so I had to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, they, we, uh, I'm, I'm one of the um, tail end millennials, technically. So, but yeah, we, uh, we do. We, we, a lot of it is probably because most of us grew up in the, in the 90s. And the 90s was very, very vulgar, um, all over the place. So we're used to it. That's how we how we were reared. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you know now you can't say hardly anything anymore without somebody getting all offended. So I think there is a lot of that. I think it's a generational gap, like you were talking about more than anything. But I actually, if he's if he's saying that this is a Quentin Tarantino inspired style book. That's a pretty big selling point, honestly. I think I think people should check it out. It looks pretty good. It looks like the art's really good. Um, I like the way he laid it out a lot, actually, uh, on this Ooh, page here. Which Tarantino in particular? Pulp Fiction, uh, Reservoir Dogs? That's a good uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my favorite is Reservoir Dogs, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, well, I just backed you myself, dude. Uh, so Thank you, you, good sir. Now, you are uh, over 3,000, and actually somebody else backed you as well. Uh, you are definitely yeah. over your 3,000 point. There you go. Sweet. Thank you. So my next can, – can you show me visually? Can I show For you my – sure, to see if there's any uh, – my No, my screen. Card. <laughs> Prove it, Chester. No, Prove you I back. will. I will. <laughs> So sad. Uh, what I wanted to show is the next pledge level. I know you guys can see it. So these are air fresheners, and these are dope as hell. Because if you got to co cover that dead body smell, you need an air freshener. This is true. So that, that's that's, that's, that's what at, at 3500. That's what we're going to. So we so. can say Drevis Skiba, uh, he endorses dead bodies. And here, here's my proof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, let me let me jump over here and uh, let, let me go back to the uh, page itself. 
And, uh, yep, we are sitting at 314. Excellent. There you go. Uh, so that's a stretch goal hit. And uh, hopefully over the next eight days, you can, you can get a few more of those stretch goals dropped in. Of course, the last uh, three days are the big days anyway. Uh, but uh, definitely keep an eye on this, guys, and uh, try to help them out. Uh, uh, not only is it a cool-looking book, and it's a well-set-up page. This is how you do this. Uh, Travis is a real cool guy, and we're happy to have him on here and talk about uh, uh, his project with us. So uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, uh, listening and being involved uh, with that. But uh, we do need to go on and finish the show, however. Uh, now, uh, Travis, we're going to be moving on and talking about a couple more news stories. I hope you hang out with us and uh, do those news stories. Okay. And then at the oh, well. end, we will show the project again. Okay? Okay. All right. Uh, let me see here. Miss Born uh, Radiant says, uh, "How thoughtful. Uh, we didn't get something. Uh, we didn't get something to help with the enthusiasm pledge level cleanup. I don't know what that means. Uh, I mean? Euthanasia. Oh, the euthanasia pledge. Oh, I'm sorry. I, do I don't understand what young Asian people have to do with this, but her. Uh... Oh goodness gracious. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that, that was, yeah, that was something. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, okay. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, let's see, we did that story, we did that story. Oh, oh, what is this? James Woods responds to Twitter ban. They dared, they yeah. dared to ban James Woods. Wow. Up there, there. Wow. And why did they ban him? Because he quoted <laughs> The Wire? <laughs> yeah, Ralph Elmerson. Oh no. <laughs> what did Ralph Elmerson? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Wow. And he's not uh, and he's not coming back either. He's not coming back because he didn't do anything wrong. Him. And they did and they deleted his tweet as well without his permission. <laughs> Yeah, but what's the? He's quoting someone. Uh, if you try to kill the king, you better not miss. Um, what's the problem with what? What? Why is that a problematic uh, uh, because, tweet? Because anyway? part, because part of the tweet said you gotta you leave them hanging, and that incited by Twitter heat, uh, hateful speech, insightful mm, of violence. Mm. Wow! Even though a lot of the left <laughs> would go. Without any repercussions. That's well, they, stupid. They've been doing this a lot. There's been a lot of conservatives banned over the past couple of weeks. Uh, like, what some other people have been banned? Mm. Uh, Miley Yiannopoulos. Um, yeah. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson. I don't. Th I think he's still on Twitter, but they've banned him off of everywhere else, pretty much. And poor, poor Alex Jones. Well, Alex they, Jones, the no, legend. Rip his side. These are a little while ago. There's been a few of the past couple of weeks, actually. There's been a bit of a banning storm going on. I just no, they banned, they banned Alex entirely, even his private accounts off of, mm -hmm. like, you can't even, you're not even supposed to mention his name or his website on Facebook. He's without gone. Okay, if let, you, let me, if let you me try. do it without um, tearing it, without, uh, what's it called, disparaging it, basically, dis disavowing it, it, you will be, you can be banned yourself. I see. Well, uh, let me test that theory. I'm going to test you guys. Right, yeah, everybody yeah. quiet. Everybody oh, quiet. Oh, oh. Shh, 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 shh. Here we go. Here we go. Alex Jones. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Tommy <laughs> okay, Robinson. Let's see. Let's see uh -oh. how that goes. Maybe they'll ban oh, us, Oh, no. We're too. playing with fire. You're playing with fire, you maniac. <laughs> the, the, gag is, the gag is that you can't mention Alex Jones without disparaging him. So uh, people now are saying... I hate Alex Jones, and I hate the way he tells the truth. <laughs> Boy, let, let me be obstinate, day, and then I shall oh, let wait, me do sorry. it again. Okay, everybody quiet, everybody quiet. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. I love uh, Alex okay. Jones and Tommy Robinson. Let's see how that goes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you're a madman. I know. But the, you, you know the funny thing is. Uh, I actually enjoy Tommy Robinson because he's being treated completely unfairly treated. That is nonsense. That's a government after his ass, right? That is serious mm -hmm. business. Alex Jones, I can only tolerate him for a certain amount of minutes, he, actually, before he starts grating on my I, nerves. I just find him. I just find him funny. He's a man. He is a funny. Maniac. He is, and I get the shtick. Yeah. Uh, but I can only watch him for so long because it just it it grates on me. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but it doesn't matter. He, he he's not doing anything wrong. It, 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 this is all political, but uh, boy, James Wood, that 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 that, that is a, not the right person. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. has an opinion. Hold on a second. And Donald Trump himself, the real Donald Trump. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I got to read the president. <clears throat> okay, everybody be quiet. The orange man is speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, who, no, Booster, you do it. You do much better uh, Trump than me. Go ahead. 
Oh, oh man, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. That's all that, uh, uh. <laughs> How can it be possible that James Woods and many others, a strong and but responsible conservative voice, is banned from Twitter, social media, and fake news media, together with their partner, the Democratic Party, have no idea the problems they're causing for themselves? Very unfair. Oh boy. That was, that was terrible. <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Oh boy. That wasn't good at all. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, well, that was totally awesome. I approve of it. And and <laughs> Wow. Uh, but Donald Trump Jr. here says it's interesting yeah. how Twitter and Facebook both seem more concerned with silencing nonviolent people who hold political opinions they disagree with than violent terrorist organizations and the people that, uh, that support them. It's very true. Net and frickin' yeah. Yahoo says, wow, uh, unbelievable. Twitter is shutting down accounts of conservative Americans while keeping the accounts of Hamas uh, and uh, an evil terror organization that launched more than 600 missiles into Israel cities, killing four civilians in the last two days yeah well uh, the, the, that in itself is an interesting statement mr netanyahu because 600 mi missiles only killed four people those those hamas guys suck dude <laughs> those are some pretty bad missiles yeah. but um it's actually real simple why this is happening uh twitter is not owned by jack dorsey he's just the ceo or whatever the uh -huh. main shareholder of twitter is saudi arabia and that's why things like hamas and, and terrorist organizations don't disappear from twitter because Saudi Arabia backs most of them, so they own they own Twitter. They have for a long time. They they bought out um, most of the shares years ago. Yeah, but it's um, interesting them banning of James Wood. I mean, I like James Wood too. He's a fun guy. But James Wood has brought out the president and freaking Netanyahu. J damn, dude. Well, that was uh, I think that was Netanyahu's son, actually. Well, Pretty whatever. Sure. It's well, a Netanyahu. Yeah, it wasn't Benjamin. Right. But, but I, um, personally, I think, you know, the secret I think is actually going to happen in the future. A lot of people saying Ben Shapiro is going to run for president. No, he's not. He's going to become the boss of Israel. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So yeah. you see how you see how they treat Ben Shapiro tomorrow. when he gets off a plane in Israel, dude, is like freaking royalty. No joke, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see what the um, chat here says uh, real quick. Uh, the Anakin and Cody X says, uh, you are basically a millennial if you're still a teenager in any form in 200. I don't think we have a year 200. That's kind of a long time ago. <laughs> um, uh, 2000, I see. Uh, Bullet says, poor bastards. Uh, Miss Poor Radiant says, uh, how thoughtful. Uh, we get something to help with the... Uh, oh, I already read that. Uh, Eric Hawkins, I read that as well. Uh, and uh, oh, even Van, uh, even Van Skyver says Eagle was banned from Cross Comics. <laughs> it's not hard to do, dude. <laughs> Just go oh, over there and say Rick Manly is a stupid name, and you're banned. You're just kicked. <laughs> All right. Oh, Rick, you silly boy. Yeah, I know. Let's Rick roll, Rick. Ah, uh, Rick's a Rick's a treasure. He's a national treasure of Canada. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta have something. Gotta have Travis, something. you're not from Canada, right? Uh, no, no, no. I'm American. Right. I, I'm a Yankee, uh, oh, but I'm from New England, so I hate Yankees. Oh, it's very Dude, I'm I'm a Yankee too. I'm from New New England as well. <laughs> oh, okay. What part? I'm from R Rhode Island. Oh, I'm from Rochester, New Hampshire. Oh, there you go. We are the best Americans, by the way. It's okay. That's true. That's true. Wait, very a, minute. True. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are lies? No. Uh -oh. You're barely lies. even in America. You're so hey. tiny and insignificant. I'm, you're I'm you're ready to barely even sing. part of the country. Yeah, right? <laughs> I can Dude. out America, and, all of you. And we know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! But no, we we New Englanders we're the really the people who truly understand struggle. We have the jackasses to the south of us in New York, and then to the west of us we have the damn French. So don't even tell me nothing. We are separated to, from the rest of the country, having to battle for our freedom from these people. To the west of to the southwest of you, you have the the rest of America. Yeah, America. Yeah, but yeah, we're blocked. The French and the New Yorkers are between us, dude. I'm telling you. I didn't. I didn't tell you to live there. <laughs> we should just give that part to Canada. We don't need it. Go on, just take. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, but actually, the funny. Yeah, go ahead. But it's really like Democrats. So if you're a Democrat in New England, you're really just Republican light. Like we don't even really know what we're doing up there. It's all confusing. It is true. You know, if you go further south in the Boston area, then it gets a little crazy. But if you're talking Rhode Island, because it's all money. They all came from money in there. Yep. You know, from Mayfair and all that. 
Oh, well, I am an actual Mayflower, dude. My grandmother's an Allen. No joke. I am as well. Well, there you go. Yeah. We are the original Americans. No. Yes. No, that's my people. The no. Cherokee. Oh, Proud Cherokee. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Uncanny Kodiak says, uh, uh, James Woods is a well-known, outspoken, flaming Republican. He's gay? I didn't know that. Uh, that's why. Uh, no, can't have gay. that, you know. I thought they were pro-gay. Gay for the Republicans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe this is a sign of Twitter's bubble popping. Ooh, uh, that sounded sexual uh it it it, it, it We're not is popping as twitter uh, as buddy cherry Jeez. i guess it's is literally the worst invention mankind has uh, ever made it's unfortunate uh, these uh sns technologies actually are very handy but they're they've really screwed us over in a lot of ways uh it's un, it's really unfortunate uh let me try to catch up real quick uh twitter will not survive the next few five years i uh, probably not uh bullet i swore we'll on his stream and he didn't kick me uh we're going back to myspace is that true say Denali? Uh, New Englanders represent. Yeah. That's right, Evan. Uh, New England is almost Canada. Oh my God, Eric! That is, them are fighting words, dude. Actually, when you go up uh, north of Maine into Canada, that's actually just part of New England. Uh, they're not part of Canada either. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> uh, just, just keep, just keep doing them gymnastics in your brain there to justify. Good. You not being Canadian, it's okay. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. You know, one thing that is good about them that, that that northern section of Canada, especially in Nova Scotia, they've got some beautiful yeah. ladies up there, dude. And it's a secret. It's true. It it's is a true statement. True. It's, it, they're they're being wasted in Canada. Wasted. They are. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick W says Chester lived in Japan for three decades, though. So what? I'm a proud American patriot. Uh, the struggle is real. Chester Busby, 2019. Cherokee, Cherokee people, Cherokee pride. That's a good song. That's uh, right. That's right. All right. Uh, let's move on here to another news thing before uh, we get lost in James Woods' flamingness. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, Bleeding Fool says, petition to remove Brie Larson from the MCU. What is this? By Captain Frugal. Captain Frugal is going after the Brie Larson. Do you think that's necessary? How dare, How dare he go... To After a national a strong, beautiful women. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this out there. At this point, the rah rah Brie Larson's evil is just great marketing for Marvel. Yeah. Um, all you're yeah. doing is making them more money. You people need to just shh. What, what do you think? Go wild and go mild. What do you think, Tra Travis, about this whole Brie Larson debacle? Um, I just think that she should shut her mouth and just act. Um. Mm -hmm. That's that's really it, but it's it's kind of ridiculous, like how far we're taking it. Um, it's uh, you know I just had a conversation with someone today. Like the the A Force part of Avengers didn't bother me. You know the all the women doing stuff. What bothered me was coming in and saving the day randomly, which is not Captain Marvel's thing. Like it's really not. She's not used that way in the comic. Why would she use that way? No, no, in the comic, she's no, more of no, a uh, what we call it a uh, dictator fascist. Yeah. Uh, no, in the com in the old comic, she was basically kind of a dick sleeve, but uh, you know. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> ding ding ding! Um, she, but, but, it's but, because Feige but, has decided that she's Superman for them, uh, and that's yeah. the role he wants her to be. He wants her to be Superman. I what? guess, but uh, look at Captain Marvel versus Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman didn't need the No Doubt song, you know, "I'm Just a Girl" to prove that she's a woman. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. well. She's also, you know, Gal Gadot, and just, just and living. It's very obvious, beauty. she's a woman. Woo! Yeah. Oof. Well, Woo. you know. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, I actually haven't seen Captain Marvel yet. But uh, uh, I did watch a very thorough breakdown of it. Uh, it's called Captain Marvel is Meh. Or something meh. An unbridled meh. That An is a unbridled great video. meh. That if you haven't seen that YouTube, uh, I can't remember who it is offhand, but you. It's can... like Moller or something. Something like that. Uh, but the, that is a very in-depth breakdown of that movie. Uh, and of course, this person mm -hmm. is not is 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 hating on the movie, but the, it's actually really well breakdown, uh, a good, good breakdown. And it's mm -hmm. interesting to me because I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, all oh, these other characters are good. It's just Brie isn't good." But from listening to that breakdown, it sounds like the movie is just riddled with plot holes. I mean, from beginning to end. So another I don't great know. guy who does. Another guy who does really great breakdowns of these kind of movies is the Critical Drinker. If you heard of him, he's great as well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. well uh, the one, the one thing that uh, makes 
uh, gal um, so much better than Bree is that she can collect it, she can kick all of our asses. Oh yeah. Uh, no. Don't want me, no. Uh, George. No. She's hardcore military. Yeah, George, no, hardcore George. Military. I don't care, George. I don't care. This is like all those I, idiots over Collider video talking about Ron and Rogers. She kicked my ass. I, mean, I doubt it. I doubt it. Are you kidding me? She ain't kicking she's my military. ass or nothing, she's George. Military. She won't. You won't stand a chance, sir. Uh, excuse me. Will you think military has anything to do with anything? You know how many jarheads I've thrown out of bars in my life, dude? Oh, come on. Uh, uh, Were they military? Yeah, Marines. Yeah, that's what jarhead means, yeah. You said jarheads. Yeah, jarheads, Marines. Yes. Yeah. He's Canadian. Do forgive him. He is Canadian. Hmm. He is is a symptom. That's true. Yeah. I mean, Gail, Gail can come kick my ass whenever she like. I would absolutely love that, but I don't think I don't think if I if I tried to stop her, she would be able to, you know, continue yeah. that action. I guess it depends on the person. I, it doesn't matter anyway. We like Gal uh, Gal Gadot. We're not going to be mm-hmm. hating on her anyhow. Uh, I, I was no really way. worried because we saw her in Fast and Fury. She wasn't a very good actress. She went into the Wonder Woman. She did fine. So I mean, good job, really. I think. Um, but here's the question, though. <clears throat> I mean, and fair, you know, try to take your bias and put it away for a minute. Who's a better actress, though, Brie Larson or Gal Gadot? Well, I Gal. literally haven't seen. Uh, <laughs> well, you uh, Gal see, Gadot we've seen Brie do other things, woman, though. Right? And she yeah. won an Oscar for the Room or whatever. That's apparently a big but deal. That the, but that was the kids. It the was the kid won yeah. the Oscar. It was, but huh, well, I mean, it's, it's I have seen good. Brie act though, and even though she's quite wooden recently, she's got a little bit of skill actually. Um, I, I she think, was good in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, see, I think she's better than Gal actually. Technically, I know, I know that's a hmm. that's treasonous thing to say, uh, but actually, she's probably better. Captain actor. Marvel. But you're wrong, and you're welcome to have it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm afraid I have to agree for the most part. It's just three lots. You just Captain triggered Marvel. Denali. I love it. I, I know, dude. I know. Uh, and Bullet Bullet says, "Don't I blame don't, Canada for I, George's lack of common knowledge." Okay, we won't. Do here, that. here. I'll take the heat off of Chester, and I'll just say the really sexist thing. I don't care. Women can't act. Men are better actors. Just be pretty. <laughs> wow. All right. Fine. All right. Oh, I didn't geez. say that. <laughs> Oh, um, that's an illegal opinion in 2019. Well, to be sir. fair, though, <laughs> right now that's kind of true, um, and the reason is because the, the dudes are fighting hard to get the uh, to get their jobs, particularly the Canadians and the and the British, uh, and they're they're putting a lot of work into the in their bodies and their acting and stuff. They're trying hard to get their roles and be successful, uh, whereas the girls are just kind of floating on this nonsense that's going on. To be fair, right now that is a true statement. It's not always been. There's been plenty of great actresses in the past, but right now, name no, a yeah. good actress. Emily Emily Blunt. She's doing a good job. Who else? There- there's it's just it's just like in many other things there yeah there are some great actresses but the deluge of great male actors it is always overshine them they've always drawn more money it, it's there's a reason for that and it's just men are better at it i don't know why but we are mm. um i i, I don't know the, if the i agree market with 100%. Demand i think it's would... a, i think it's a modern phenomenon to be honest with you what is the fact that uh, we do currently have a lot ma- better male actors than female right now I don't think no, that's always we been always true. have. No, I yes, don't agree. it has. We've had some You're great actors in the past, dude. Sure, we've had some, but compared to the number of men and the number of men who sold more more tickets and things. Well, the men are certainly draws. more, and, and the reason for that is because when you have a good male actor, uh, the the mm-hmm. the men want to either are either just enjoying the acting or they want to be like him, and the women are want to see them right, and enjoy them, right? Mm-hmm. So this is why my, my male actors pull more than female actors anyway. Jason Momoa, but Jason Momoa, I mean he he's put he's beefcake. He put he was put in there for a reason. Uh, but Travis, come reason. in here and Aquaman correct this man, Travis. <laughs> Talk about Jason Momoa. I was just talking yeah, about here, the. I, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We're talking about the things we would do to Jason like, Momoa. I think, as for for actors, I think women. There's just as many good women and actors. Just just bad roles. There's a lot more better roles for men than there are there are women. That's what I, that's what I would say. Uh, women are are very typecast in different things. Uh, someone just mentioned uh, Holly Berry in the chat. 
Holly Berry has, it took her like tons of movies to find a role where she can go, oh, she's actually pretty good. Monster Party, the movie that nobody saw, right? That's the one she won with. Um, I've seen a few so scenes I, of that. Yeah, uh, so I, I think that there's just better roles uh, for, for men for men actors at this point. Um, and I also didn't think Captain Marvel was a horrible movie. There's tons of plot, plot holes. It's, it's just there was a, an agenda that was thrown in there mm-hmm. at the end um, that wasn't necessary, as, as you can see with Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. There's another opinion. Uh, this is interesting, though, with this petition from Captain Frugal. Uh, of course, it won't be successful. Uh, but um, it, it, it's I don't know that we need to go that far uh, because I, I don't think that... Um, I, 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 we'll, we'll see, but I have a feeling what Marvel's going to do is they're going to go a little bit, they're going to dip their toe in the water. They've already done this, and they're going to they're going to they submerge the foot a bit more, and they're going to find this huge backlash and drop in money, and then they'll go back to doing what they were doing. Uh, I think is what we're going to see happen with Feige in charge anyway. Um, uh, uh, over Kathleen Kennedy with Lucasfilm, they just need to get rid of her and replace her is what they need to do because she's on an agenda and she's not going to stop. It's that, it's, that, it's that simple. Uh, but Feige is not that way. He's obviously listening and being told to do things, and he's doing it. But I think in the long run, Feige is oh, not going to allow it to be com- complete, oh, completely Chester, implode. Oh, why? What? Why? You, you're you just going to – I'm going to watch your heartbreak in real time in the coming years as you, you will. continue you to will. trust you this will. man. <laughs> you're just – you're like the kind of – you're like a pleasing housewife at this point. It's like, Feige treats me well when no one else is around. You just don't see his sweet side. Don't they're you about, remember the first Avengers? <laughs> they're about to make Fine. almost $3 billion off of off of uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe in one movie. Yes. yes. I don't think they're changing anything. I don't care. Like, they're going to ram Brie Larson down everyone's throat for at he, least a decade, and you're all going to either like it or stop watching. And if you stop watching, they're going to call you a name, or you're going to just sit there and be good little drones and say, I love it. It's great, just like people do with Endgame. And... Mm-hmm. That's just the, that's their agenda. They don't have any reason to change it. They're making tons of money. Why would they? And they obviously have a political agenda because it's not Marvel that's doing it. It's not even Feige that's doing it. It's Disney that's doing it. Disney is the source of all the woes when it comes I know. to this stuff. I know that's true. I know. And here's the good thing, though: we can sit over here and agree to disagree all the time, and that's good because we have many different opinions here, and that's one of the things I love about fan speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, it's unfortunate that the uh, other side can't do that. They can't have a normal conversation, uh, and it's really unfortunate because I, I, I'm I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, uh, and uh, hope, and I may be disappointed, but I'm going to keep I'm going to keep a hopeful look because I I'm very happy that I have gotten uh, over a decade of amazingly fun comic book movies because I would have never expected that to happen in my life. So uh, yeah. ultimately, I am I am thankful. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you on that. Uh, I'm at the same spot, and uh, it, it is interest. It is nice to see that we at least got to see some of our, you know, some of these things. Especially for Stan, who mm-hmm. unfortunately passed last fall, mm-hmm. he got to see some of it too. He got to see he his did. world come to he life, did. and it, you could yeah. tell every time he talked about it, his eyes just lit up like yeah. he was happy. Yeah. So he deserves it. Very, good point. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, well, now- and you better acknowledge the Star Wars changes. So the Star Wars. They did push the agenda too far, and they saw the results of that. It affected the Han Solo sales. It affected a lot of things. Yeah. So I think Disney does get it, and they they will figure it out in the next few years. But I think it's going to be a push of agenda, and then go, oh well, that didn't go well. We're going to have to back off and figure it out and recalibrate. Yeah, but see, they they've literally put a huge dent in the enthusiasm around the biggest IP ever created, dude. They've here, here I want to explain. It. I want to explain something real quick. I was literally looking this up just a little while ago because I was just curious uh, how well Endgame's doing, see if it's going to break the all-time total number. Yeah. And I don't think it is now because it slowed way down this weekend. But that's neither here nor there. I was looking at domestic gross, adjusted gross, so the all-time in America is still gone with the wind. Number two is Star Wars. Out of the top 20, four or I think four or five of those movies are Star Wars movies. Yeah, That oh, is yeah. insane. Mm. And they killed it in one movie they killed all the enthusiasm i had for it in one movie yeah. and i'm sure i'm not alone in this uh, oh, obviously no, no. i'm not yeah so, i don't even care when they announced the trailer for rise of the skywalkers i was like really they did that 
and the only reason why I covered it because we're doing this show. Yeah. And we have to do it. But if I wasn't doing the show, I would have forgotten that they were actually having a movie this year just because I'm so disinterested in it. Hmm. I'm sure it's still going to do well. Like, I'm pretty sure. I know Solo just kicked the bucket. I don't know what. I'm pretty sure that's to do with Last Jedi. It just came right after Last Jedi. I'm so, sure. It's, yeah. This is recorded. the closing of the trilogy, it's right? It's, well, yeah, it'll it's probably do, do a billion and a half. I think it'll probably do about a billion and a half. I yeah, don't think it'll break. Likely. Um, uh, so, two billion, but... Solo was... It won't hurt break by the... Force Awakens, surely. Well, uh, probably not. But um, uh, Solo was certainly hurt by The Last Jedi, but it also was hurt by the fact that it's really not a good movie. It really isn't. Hmm. Uh, Rogue well, One is a much better movie uh, than Solo, yeah. for se, per se, right? Uh, but, In uh, Solo, we... you've got to think of that Star Wars has built you, you have to wait for Star Wars because they're good. You can't put them out like a superhero movie. And I think they learned that you can't do that. Maybe you've seen that in their agenda. They're doing it. They're skipping a couple of years, giving it a pause. Star Wars is not superhero movies. You can't just put a different superhero or a different splash on it and go, oh, you're going to love it. It's because of Star Wars because it's not what fan, fans want. You know, we want very good quality, very high standard, very high stakes, you know. Um, you know, say what you will about even Last Jedi or even Force Awakens, you know, if you look at those movies compared to George Lucas, George Lucas took a lot of risks in one, two, and three, good or bad, took a lot of risks to try to change his IP and say, hey, this is a new idea, where they tried to back, go the opposite way of Force Awakenings. No, this is just the things you love, and then go the exact opposite way in Last Jedi. They clearly don't understand their fan base in any way. Well, I mean, with the prequels, though, if they if you cut out Jar Jar Binks and then recast the two idiot leads, uh, it would have been fine. That was the only real problem was Jar Jar Binks was way too much. Well, no, no. When you mean the two leads, do you mean Padme, uh, the uh, Pat, uh, Daniel Portman and Haitian Christensen, or yes, no, of course I mean those two. Those guys are ridiculously poor actors. I don't know the you know uh, what's her name there, Uh, Natalie Portman. They keep giving her accolades because obviously she's the right person, uh, knows the right people. That girl can't act herself out of her wet paper bag, dude. She's horrible actress. She's horrible. <laughs> Richard, Binks, Richard Binks was supposed to be a Sith Lord, but since speaking uh, of yeah, right, the Phantom it. Menace, um, it, it this is interesting. I'm looking at this list right now. Mm. It's it's the movies that are at the top besides the original trilogy are Force Awakens and uh, the Phantom Menace. So the audience is there, and they desperately want to love these movies mm-hmm. because every time mm-hmm. some new version of it comes out, they're there. They show up. Yeah, Like, they showed up for The Force Awakens, and they showed up for The Phantom Menace, which was only about $100 million behind it in total. So the audience is there. Disney just has to get over their agenda and make a damn Star Wars movie. Don't make whatever we've been given these last two movies. They're not Star Wars movies at all. The only reason The Force Awakens feels like a Star Wars movie is because it's basically a shot-for-shot remake of the original Star Wars movie. Um, so if they would just make a Star Wars movie, they would have money. They would they'd be printing money, and they would probably be making more money than they are on Infinity War right now, or on Endgame right now. But they can't get over their own their own self. Yeah. Uh, there are a few comments here in the chat I want to catch up with. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Arthur Brown, uh, the uncanny Kodiak, says, I'm not a drone, and I liked Endgame, especially when Thanos knocked Captain Marvel out. Uh, well, dude, uh, you should go watch okay, my wrong, rant yeah. review of the Endgame, and you'll see exactly how wrong you are. Uh, Game <laughs> <Ultron. laughs> You hear that? Your opinion is wrong. How does that feel? It's also wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Game of Tron says, I watched Iron Man after watching Endgame and realized that Tony Stark's glasses were Stan Lee's glasses all along. I didn't know that, but that is a cool touch. And that is one thing about Feige we do have to say, uh, and his team, the team that's creating all this stuff. They do add those little fun little things like Love You 3000 and the fact that now we have 3000 minutes of uh, actual uh, MCU movies. They do those little things. It's nice touches. I like it. Uh, Joshua says, yeah, Endgame was okay. Yeah, not really. Uh, Evan Voskiver says, Solo was fine. Uh, once again, go watch my uh, rant review, and you will see that you are wrong. It was a horrible movie. <laughs> uh, uh, Bullet says, Solo had great sets. It did have that. It did have that. Uh, Bullet says, but Rogue One was easily the best Star Wars movie from Disney. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, Bullet uh, continues, says, uh, it had a couple, a complete story with actual characters. True. 
it was the best one they put out so far. Uh, uh, Uncanny Kodiak says, Jake. All right. Uh, Evan Weisgyver says, I wouldn't say any of the Disney films were great, but Solo wasn't as bad as they said. Dude, I have seen that movie. That is a trash fire. It is really bad. I was actually surprised how bad it was because like we've already had mentioned, like Travis and a few of the other guys here had said, I thought that the the hate on it was simply just a, a kind of a boycott coming out of the, the Last Jedi. That's what I assumed. Then my wife made me watch it on Netflix. That is a bad movie, dude. It is full of plot holes. It should not be called Solo at all. It should be called whatever the girl's name is because he's an absolute Kira. idiot cuck that has nothing to do with nothing. Uh, Kira is the movie the whole thing about the movie and they should just call it Kira um, and this is something we've seen many times like Ant-Man and the Wasp no it's the Wasp etc I wish they'd just be honest well, about what they're doing how, how are you going to make a Han Solo movie with a complete no name actor or basically a no name actor mm-hmm. who has about the charisma of my door I'm looking at right now like this guy is not yeah. charismatic he's not he is nothing he couldn't hold Harrison Ford's toenail clippings that's how wor- worthless he is compa- in comparison how are you going to make a solo movie without somebody who's at least close, at least is in on the same field as Harrison Ford? And there are actors right now like that that they could have used. They just didn't. They just chose some guy who doesn't look like Harrison Ford, so you can't say it was that. Doesn't have the same uh, tone and, and pace and pitch because Harrison Ford has a very specific style of acting that he's pretty much done in every movie he's ever made. Not even close. The guy wasn't even close. Why would anybody have? I, I really don't. I didn't. I wasn't interested in it at all when I saw who they picked to play Han Solo. I'm like, that's not Han Solo. Doesn't, for doesn't like it. Yeah. For most of the movie, that guy that was playing Han Solo had a smile on his face. There was there was no danger whatsoever in that yeah. in, in the execution of the story or the acting. You're just sitting there going like, what's going on yeah. here? Yeah. Well, and, and Han Solo isn't a smiler. I mean, he smiles sometimes, but it's not. It's usually being a smart ass kind of smile, right? He is it's a bit not of a like rummaging, that's true. Uh, yeah. but um, yeah. but it's but uh, let me ask a very simple time. question. This this will solve the argument, uh, completely. Uh, what is Han Solo famous for? What is he famous for? No one across the galaxy, <laughs> he shot first. He shot first. Uh, oh, but being no, a smuggler. he's yeah. smuggler. Kessel no, Martin. he's famous for the Kessel Run. Right? Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this right. movie, what did they do? They completely took it away from him. Han Solo had nothing to do with the Kessel Run. That was this uh, stupid computer thing they put in and all the other people helping, especially the ladies. Right? They, the one thing he's famous that's for, just, they took away. Right? That's just dumb. That's what they that's did. Just, it's not even agenda dumb. That's just stupid. It is. Why would you do that? Um, anyway, we, we're way off, and we need to get to our last story of the day because we need to get back over to Travis and talk more about his project. And this one right here, actually, I'm slightly, slightly anticipating, possibly happy about, maybe, Mark Wahlberg cast as the Blue Falcon. <laughs> I love the Blue Falcon when I was a kid. It was my best Hollywood costume ever. Uh, but uh, let me just read this real quick. Uh, Mark Wahlberg has been cast as Blue Falcon in Warner Brothers' next animated Scooby-Doo film, Scooby, according uh, Scoob, according to Deadline. Uh, Kim Jong uh, uh, was previously reported to be uh, voicing Dynamot. Oh, nice. Uh, meanwhile, Harry, uh, meanwhile, Harry Potter actor J- Jason Isaacs has also reportedly joined the cast of Scoob as the film's villain, Dick Dastardly, who alongside his own dog, Muttley, was the villain of the classic cartoon Wacky Races, as well as the star of his own spin-off show. Very true. Scoob will bring together characters from various Hanna-Barbera, uh, Hanna-Barbera animated uh, series with Scooby-Doo they, and Mystery Inc. taking uh, center stage. They're going to have a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe? That's what they do. It sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's strange, but all right. Yeah. Um, oh, no. I think it's going to be all 3D animated, though. Probably, maybe. But I love Blue Falcon. Though, I though. hope so. Um, have, you ever, cool. have you ever looked out and just saw storm clouds just gathering, just a vicious storm coming? <laughs> That's what I see when I look at this. This ain't going to be pretty, folks. Well, now, here's the thing, though. Now, I want to make an interesting distinction. This is back in the time where the hero was still heroic because the Blue Falcon was smart, clever, capable. Right. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, his uh, uh, dino mutt here uh, that was along with him was a bit of an idiot and always used to clumsily fall into success. Right. So the Blue Falcon was the hero. Now, we've seen a lot of that shifting 
recently, right? We've seen the, a lot of the heroes mm -hmm. become these idiot fools that are being saved. Inspector Gadget was one that came out after this that kind of, uh, that uh, well, of course it was doing the uh, Pink Panther uh, Peter Sellers take, I get that. Uh, but we've seen a lot, right? Homer Simpson, moron. Uh, fam Peter from Family Guy, moron. They keep taking the hero or the male figure and making them absolute idiots and there's some side character that has to make sure they get through it successfully. Uh, so Blue Falcon is the opposite of that. The Blue Falcon is the hero. He is the capable one. And it really, I hated that uh, Adult Swim crap that took Space Ghost and made him an idiot. Because Space Ghost was not an idiot. He was very capable. <laughs> I love Space Ghost, Ghostly Ghost. <laughs> I do too, yeah, and it's funny. Right. But it's the same problem that I and many others have with our great Lord Thor in the Endgame movie. Oh, yes. They take yes. Thor, a great, masculine, capable man who's been alive for 1,500 years and faced all sorts of demons and monsters and everything else and turned him into a blubbering fat mess who can't even face his own ex-girlfriend. Oh, it's, it's worse than that, dude. Wait a minute. He hold needs on. his mommy. Go ahead. Was that, because like that has happened in Thor a hundred times where he gets like that you know, or some version of that. Uh, and he lost his whole fucking planet. Like, so I, I thought that that was okay. I get your, what you're saying. I'm not saying you're a hundred percent wrong, but I mean, it at least was a progression that was achievable or in the thing. Tony Stark not wanting to partner with anybody ever again because he fucked up. It was, was far more unrealistic. Okay, well, let me find my mute button here. Hold on a second. Uh, no, all right. no, 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 you come uh, to our show and have incorrect opinions? Know, How dare right? you? Uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> I do like what Eric Hawkins here says. He says, Chester equals Blue Falcon. Booster equals Dynamite. Dude, that is such a truth. You dropped a truth on the show today, man. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah, it's true. Bumble King. Here, uh, here's my only, only counter to it. I don't really care if, if they've ever done that before. It's still stupid. Even if they do something, just because they do something in a comic book doesn't make it smart. Um, yeah, they, they it's a they, dumb thing to do <laughs> to uh, no, do that well, to Thor. If they had taken a moment of uh, just you know he's discouraged, he has lost a lot in these movies, and a moment of uh, lack of confidence, and he kind of fell down, and we had some little moment where someone picked him up and he went forward, that would be fine. Uh, but uh, that's not what they did. They took him and destroyed him completely, dude. They tore him down from second one. He's on the screen, and they just dra drug him through the mud. And how ironic that they did this, because he is the hero of Infinity War, which was a great movie. And Endgame is, a, in my opinion, a 2 out of 10. It's that bad, right? Oh, and man. And, you know, uh, brutal. they absolutely ripped Thor apart in that movie, dude. They went way too far. A little bit of it would have been fine, but that's not what mm -hmm. they did. They tore that guy down hard. They did. Yeah, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even have tolerated him, like, being fat and kind of being a joke for a little bit if he would have got it together. But now you see you have the writers saying that at the end of the movie, he is the ideal Thor. His exact words. And he's the, he hasn't really changed at all. I mean, yeah, he gets up and fights, but... I thought it was after he got a pat on the back from his mommy. Um, it's just, no, that's not the no. Thor that they've established in the MCU for 10 years. No. That's not how he handles things. It's just bad writing. It's point bad. blank, period. Yeah. Uh, now, the Uncanny Kodiak, the Uncanny Kodiak, does say, that's dope. Chester and I finally agree. Our halter, our, our, our hatred for Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and Harvey Birdman, Attorney of Law, stupid crap. I agree, Uncanny. You're right. You are finally right. <laughs> so, so I, I my one counter to that. So, does that mean Detective Pikachu in this new Sonic movie is part of the uh, Smash Brothers multiverse? If the Santa Barbara thing is accurate, I, I <laughs> okay. Oh, don't give them ideas. Just okay. please don't give them ideas. <laughs> Too late. Oh, Somebody's no. already listening in. I don't know, right. uh, but I would. It would be really cool for me to Absolutely. see a cool Blue Falcon Smash but... movie. They're gonna That'll screw be it brutal. up. Yeah, I thought because Nintendo make was comedy. smarter than this. Well, to be fair, though, uh, they are uh, smarter, but they don't own Pokemon. It's by the Pokemon company. That's true. Yeah, apparently, true. Uh, the Detective Pikachu is doing very well. It is doing well. Yeah, um, but. Um, you know, uh, uh, the Blue Falcon thing, though, uh, just to touch on the Hanna-Barbera, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The comic crossovers that, uh, that DC Comics is doing with Hanna-Barbera characters are pretty cool. I like what they've done uh, with those, actually. I've had you know, a lot of fun. Actually really good. Uh, 
Even there's these animated the movies based on Batman the Brave and the Bold um, mixed with Scooby-Doo, and they're, they're wonderful. <laughs> they're, they're so cheesy, but they're really wonderful. Mm. Well, it reminds you of the old um, 70s where they had Batman and Robin in the Scooby-Doo game fighting mm-hmm. the Joker. Right. Batman 66. That's right. You had uh, uh, Adam West and Burt uh, Ward reprising the roles, so it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Chester Marima as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Uncanny Cody X says, this, uh, I am right uh, that Thor was amazing and he kicked ass in Endgame. Uh, no, Uh-oh. no, bad, bad. Who's Uncanny Cody his X. own? Because he got his ass whooped by Thanos. Yeah, that was a stomping. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. he laid on the ground smiling that the ladies were being successful. Uh, anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> we're coming back to our guest. And his Kickstarter broke down in four dead bodies, issue one and two, a crime no war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining us, Travis. Uh, would you like to give one last push for your book here, dude? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, broke down four dead bodies. Two guys break down on the side of the road. Bad things happening. Lots of swears, lots of violence, lots of F words. Um, it's a really fun book. If you really miss the old crime stuff, crime is rare in comics. It used to be the staple of where comics came from. Crime, mm-hmm. It was crime, sci-fi. That's right. Or, uh, so this is kind of getting back into that. Um, broke down, just to kind of tell you what my goal is. So this is a four-issue mini. After it, broke down is kind of a state of mind. I'm going to go into a series of, of one-shots. So broke down and tapped out is a wrestling story, but it's set in the same universe. Uh, broke down and locked up is a, is everyone's in prison is a prison story. We have broke down and patched in, which is a punk rock story. So we're, we're developing this kind of universe um as as we're building stuff but it's really trying to get into that crime noir state of mind i've done some unique stuff so it, it is going to feel like a quentin tarantino movie it is going to feel like things that you're familiar with but i've created kind of this unique universe that has some unique rules as you get through it there's going to be no but but i'm not going to do the typical comic trope right where we start out as one thing and then it becomes supernatural halfway through it's all modern it's all regular uh, but we're going to do some unique things. Sounds good, man. And uh, you had you were up to three thousand eighty-one dollars today, so you did make a little cash here. I'm, I, I do appreciate everybody in the chat coming on and supporting that. That is cool. Uh, and uh, definitely uh, check, take a look at it if you haven't backed it already. And uh, uh, it's a it's a cool looking project. And of course, Travis himself. He uh, uh, it's nice to have someone in the community that does know some of the things they're doing. And there are there are others as well. Uh, and it's uh, nice to have that resource around. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be uh, uh, you know asking you questions, and you're going to have to be the helpful the helpful godfather are you up for that travis yeah no i, I love helping people up i helping people out i do uh there's a couple of couple of things that you can do really easy to get your kickstarter known or get a fan base because you need a fan base because you can't make it without a fan base um the other thing you know uh that i want to mention is i posted it in the chat the uh the, the link to the comic mm-hmm. i also gave it to chester i'm sure he'll put it in the, the description after after this goes off the air but please read it. You know, I want people to read your book. And actually, that's the biggest thing I can tell you. If you're making comics, let people read them, man. Like that's what they're for. Yes, you need to be funded. Yes, you need to be funded for the next one. But but give back to the community that that's done so much for you. Because I'm super blessed to be part of this community and meet all sorts of amazing people who just care about this project. The fact that I can debate Thor and have a different opinion is means that we care about these characters so immensely. So and I, I look forward for you guys to meet my characters and enjoy them just as much. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, no, I'm opening this up, and this is number one, and I'm going to go ahead and put this absolutely enormous link in here. Uh, let me uh, copy this. Uh, that is a big link, dude. Uh, all right, let me come over right. here. I'm going to put that <laughs> right now. So, so I'm putting check it out. All right, I'll- all right, and I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to call it BD. Or B- BDSM? Uh, is that you? No, 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 Ooh. no, no, no. Before we go, real quick, I did have I did have a question. So, is broke down oh. and for is that the full title for like this is a series? I'm assuming is what you're hoping for. Is that the, going to be the full name? Broke down in four dead bodies, the whole series? No, or is no, that... no. Broke down is the the main okay. series. Broke down in four dead. Broke Down in Four Dead Bodies is this mini-series. 
and then everything will have a new tagline that's added to it to show you it's different. And I'll, gotcha. I'll do like legacy numbers, uh, like Marvel should be doing. I know they keep doing it for a while, then they leave it. Uh, but I'll have legacy numbers, kind of like if you're reading the series. Because as indie books, you know, no one's going to buy an issue 12 in an indie book because they don't believe you're going to get to issue 12. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's easier to just do little things like that, small little mini series. Well, cool, dude. Now, I put that link cool, in thanks. there. It should show it up by now. You guys can see it down in our links below. And I will leave that there for a week, and uh, I will mention it as well uh, for people to check it out. And they'd be able to go over, and uh, I think probably I should put the link to the uh, uh, Indiegogo as well. Uh, but I'll go back and do that. But uh, definitely check it out. He's offering you the first uh, book. Of course, he's uh, uh, for you to check it out and read it. And then you go over and back uh, this one and the new one. And of course, there's the third one coming, too. So uh, it's really cool. Uh, and uh, definitely be part of supporting that, because uh, that's what we want do we want to support these indie creators but uh anyway uh thank you guys very much for being here today it's been a lot of fun uh do keep in tomorrow uh, mind that tomorrow is of course tft which is tin foil talk and uh what are we talking about tomorrow uh Dinelli? <clears throat> the age no epidemic clue. no 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 <laughs> no oh no oh dear. Well, there's no <laughs> no no definitely not uh, i thought we were going i thought we were going with uh um Shoot, I, I totally forgot. Thank the, you, Booster. You made me the forget man, the whole thing. The man, the myth, the legend, the Nikolai. living god of electricity himself, Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Well, he's not living right. anymore, but yeah. <laughs> Nikolai Tesla. And uh, actually, it was allegedly at one point, but did well, he exist? Um, I actually have a lot to add to that conversation. We are talking about Tesla tomorrow, guys. I was kind of letting yeah. going to let uh, Denali do his thing, but he failed me. <sighs> I blame Booster. He he made me lose track. <laughs> did it's Booster's fault. <laughs> my uh, but we are and definitely talking to Nikolai Tesla to tomorrow on uh, on t- uh, Tinfoil Talk, and that's going to be a uh, popular conversation, I think, uh, because uh, I'm actually going to bring Keller himself into the conversation. <gasps> Ooh. Do you know who he is? Probably not. Uh, but uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we do love that show. And, of course, we have another week coming up with tons of stuff. Uh, but definitely check us out every day, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. we got something going on. And it sounds like on Mondays we might be moving uh, to a 9 o'clock show to try to accommodate some people and see how that goes. Uh, but uh, other than that, Denali, take us out of here, man. Before that, All though, right. I have my own stream yeah. in an hour. No. 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 Yeah. No. And I'm going to show in the chat, and you can't stop me. Now, hold on a second. How do you got to have a stream in an hour when you are trying to get to a million subs without having a stitch of content? Well, it's not my channel. Oh, well, then you're lying. See, that's the problem. I am a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so whose, show, whose channel are you going to be on? Uh, Matt's. Oh, Matt's. Oh, cool. Matt. That's cool. We had him on the other day. Uh, he's cool. No, he's cool no Matt. Not Matt's. You don't know. You don't know Matt. Which Matt? Matt! My, my mate Matt! He's my bro! He lives down the street! Oh god, alright. Don't go watch oh, that. He just went hard oh, Kiwi there. Oh, he just went hard <laughs> Kiwi right there. Weird yeah. Australian He's my bro! Like <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. Uh, Thing goes. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you guys very much, and uh, go check out uh, Booster's uh, stream. He's going to be playing uh, Resident Evil Live. That sounds it's like good. fun. Is that a Twitch uh, tie-in too? Uh, no. No, okay. He's so he's just boomering it up, even though he's only twenty six years old. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, Denali, take us out of here, man. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for Fan Speak today. Thank you, Travelers, for taking a time out of your day to <laughs> speak with us and chat with us, and to the chat as well. We always appreciate everybody who are involved in this. We can't do it without you. But as always, your perception shapes your reality. So always make it a good one. Namaste. 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 Later, guys. Aloha.